You know what I miss about being at the stadium? It's all of this. Oh, yeah. It's the it fans, man, the energy. Especially, I've been to McMahon, and the sun on a day like this is amazing, and the food. Mm. Oh, yeah. that's what you tailgating. Oh, and got to add Pilsner. Oh, it, that's going to mm -hmm. taste great, boys. Couple pills. Oh. Jake Mayer, well, he was already without Kadeem Carey on the sixth game. Now he'll be without Reggie Bagleton, who's now in the sixth game, too. He's going to have to replace that production. You know who is producing, though? Trevor Harris, 413 yards and three touchdowns. And you know what? Walking into the uh, studio today, I had this walk. Yeah, yeah, it's the, the, yeah, the, it's, it's the shoulders. Oh, Anybody who knows Shinetti, right. it's the shoulders. You just that's that's where the energy comes from. He's rolling. And we are back alongside Paul Apolise, Matt Dunnigan, and Milt Stiegel. Good to see you again, Canada. And we're gonna get right to it because it's week three, and this is when things start to take shape. So Lapo, right to you. As a coach, what are you looking for tonight? Uh, big slot receiver. Trey Odom's Dukes, guys, mm -hmm. like uh, really impressive on tape. He's 6'2", 225 pounds. He looks about 250 pounds and he can run, right? Uh, he's got really good tools around the box. I'm, I'm excited about him getting some touches, especially with all these injuries to the receiving core. Yeah, they put a lot of talk about Bagleton being out of lineup and Kadeem Carey. Uh, that guy took up the slack last week, no problem. Dijic Mills, but I'm also looking forward to watching these young receivers, Hawk and Nabano, uh, playing. I'm talking about John, Barnes, and Tucker. These guys Gonna have to earn their hands tonight, Milt. Right. The battle of the Dickinson brothers once again. Nice. Craig and nice. little brother Dickinson Dave. Bowl. And they always say, you know, I'm not trying to beat my brother. I'm trying to beat the team that my brother coaches. Please, you're trying to beat your brother. So when you have those Christmas get-togethers, you can brag and say, yeah, I beat you again, or you didn't beat me this year. So I know those guys are gonna put up be politically correct and say the right thing, but in the back of their head, they're trying to beat their brother. Yeah, and I know that Craig, uh, especially when you throw this stat at him, one and six against his brother oh, Dave, yeah. uh, I think I've mentioned to them that before, and he kind of gave me the eyes like, no, don't talk about that, but right. here we go, the Riders and the Stamps at McMahon, beautiful day. We will send it to Rod Smith and Glenn Suter when we come back. Well, Matthew Cinetti, <laughs> welcome to Calgary, the Bull River, beautiful city, and a great day for a CFL game. We're talking Stamps Riders, red versus green, Dickinson versus Dickinson, and another interesting game, Glenn, in terms of dictating the early pecking order in the West Division. Now, Saskatchewan is coming off a loss, but there was a big positive in the play of Trevor Harris when there were some health concerns last week against Winnipeg. Yeah, Rod, what these two quarterbacks have in common is that they're coming off pretty good games offensively for Trevor Harris, the eighth time in his career. He threw for over 400 yards. He didn't get the win against the Bombers, but played great on offense. Jake Mayer for the Calgary Stampeders did get the offense going and did get the win against Ottawa, a career high for Jake Mayer. Dave Dickinson up against his brother again, and uh, Dave has got the better regular season record, although in their one playoff meeting a couple of years ago, it was Craig victorious in that one. First meeting of the season between the Calgary Stampeders and the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Calgary won the toss. There's William Longley, one of the returners, along with Peyton Logan to get this one underway. Calgary won. They want the ball. There's Brett Bob. They get it underway. This gorgeous Saturday in Southern Alberta taken coming in quickly Logan and a good place for the Stamps offense to start as he gets it up across the 40 Jake Mayer well, struggled a bit in week one against BC better performance last week in Ottawa yeah much better well, in fact a career high for him throwing the football with over 300 yards passing he is also 2-0 and against the Saskatchewan Rough Riders in his career and keep in mind this is start number 15 for Jake Mayer. He, he is still finding his way, although it feels like he's been around a lot longer because of his maturity and how he handles himself. He is very quickly assuming a leadership role on this team in just his third year. Standing back with Dedrick Mills, now the starting running back who has the ball. And a good carry on first down for Mills. 
Mills, who had just over 100 yards last week in Ottawa, filling in for Kadeem Carey, a gain of 11. Yeah, that 100-yard gain vaulted him into uh, fourth place in fourth place in the in the list for the leading rushers after a couple weeks in the CFL and yeah he's again another guy who likes to play against Saskatchewan a couple hundred yard games coming into this one against the Riders and coming off a hundred yard game against Ottawa there's an injured rider down it's Nelson Lacombo still getting uh, treated sitting on the field Tommy Stevens was in that huddle and is heading off now. Jake Mayer is still out there. Oh, Stevens, is, the backup quarterback. This is an interesting one for Saskatchewan to juggle here because Jaden Jaden Dalkey is is not dressed. He's on the six game injured injured last week, and so Nelson Lacombo was getting the start at free safety. Here's here's the injury. He just and and that very well could mean that Jackson Ford who has made the roster out of training camp and is the grandson of Al Ford out of the University of Regina may just be playing free safety in first series for Calgary be thrown right in a Jackson Ford drafted in the second round 11th overall this year by his Saskatchewan Rough Riders yeah grandpa was a member of the 66 Grey Cup champion team as a player and later, as you mentioned, general manager in the team that you played on in 89. That won now they, the cup they, again. they can't play American back there with the new rules, so we'll see. Jackson Ford is new and young, so he's going to get coached up. They have C.J. Revis in there right now. And remember, Derek Moncrief is on the roster. We'll, we'll get to the starting lineups in a second, but a little bit of juggling already for the riders. As Nelson Lacombo heads off on his own steam and a good sign. But it's a first down carry for Diedrich Mills right out of the gate. And a first and 10 Stampeders up near midfield. Back to the ground. Mills will spin. Running well. Two wow. carries into this game as he gets it down to the 46 of the riders. Wow, he looks good in the first couple of carries. Diedrich Mills and up front, they're going to make one change at guard. Bryce Bell will be the sixth offensive lineman. Zach Williams will start at that left guard position. Diedrich Mills mentioned the 100-yard game against Ottawa in his first start. And because Reggie Bagleton is out of the lineup, we're going to see a little bit more of Cole Tucker in the starting group here tonight. Some new young receivers in the lineup for Calgary in this one. Faking the sweep, Tommy Stevens was in on the first and ten. That was another first down carry before by Mills. And Stevens with another good pickup on the ground for Calgary's offense. A second and short is coming up. Charbel De Beer is going to start on the interior of that Saskatchewan front four. A little bit bigger with Lanier outside, and the reason for that, Micah Johnson will see some time in there, of course, as well. There's Derek Moncrief. He takes over for C.J. Revis. Now they've had to juggle a little bit. It looks like Revis is in for Lacombo early on here at free safety. Trey Adams Dukes, one of three receivers, out to the top of the screen, and there's the look to the right. And that's for Luther Hakuna Vanu. And it is a bit too far incomplete. Yeah, it looked like that sailed in the wind. I mean, Jake Mayer put a lot on it. He did have Hakuna Vanu in behind coverage. And some of these young receivers now are going to have to step up with Reggie Bagel. And excuse me, he's the third guy right here in the back and of that bunch formation. He's going to run this corner route. And you can see he's got some separation. It looked like the ball just took off with the wind. Rene Paredes, the veteran kicker's four for six, longest to 39 this season. This one from 47. Just a few plays into this game, Calgary gets close enough to put some points on the board. Paredes celebrates the field goal very quickly. Three nothing stamps. And now we get to see Trevor Harris and that rider offense of the CFL on TSN. Last week in the Riders' home opener, Trevor Harris was a game time decision. Didn't look like he needed to be. He looked very sharp in that home opening loss to the Blue Bombers. Threw for over 400 yards. He also threw three touchdown passes to Samuel Evans. That combination looked great. Harris did two. First possession, Saskatchewan, trailing by three. And they put it on the ground, wanting to run more after Jamal Morrow only had 20 yards.
yards rushing last week against Winnipeg. Yeah. Take a look at Harris's numbers, and yeah, over 400 yards passing in that game, and and he had not taken a lot of reps, first team reps, as you mentioned, from that injury, a little hip and back, lower back. Said he's felt as good as he's ever has felt since leaving training camp, going into this week. Second and eight, Moore remains at his side. Harris, they've got him. Down he goes, right at the rider 40. At Stampede front, Derek Wigan. Did he get one? Because the D-line hasn't got one. No sacks <laughs> yet in week three. Derek Wigan, the veteran out of Queen's University, coming in, getting to Trevor Harris. Yeah, the four guys up front, Mike Alway, they have two sacks as a defense. Mike Alway had one of them. And from the linebacking core. Titus Wallen at the other, and he's one of the Walls out, yeah, Wall is out, but D-line did not have one coming in. Two now. Adam Corsak to put it away for the Riders who go two and out. And coming in after a punt of 35, it'll be a 15-yard penalty tacked on for no yards for Jake Mayer. They moved it well down into field goal range possession two coming up. For the no stands. yards. Because of injuries to the Stamps receiving core, an opportunity to three rookie Canadians in this game today. Cole Tucker, Clark Bond, Barnes who has a few catches this season, and Rice and John making his debut, Glenn, out of Simon Fraser. Yeah, Simon Fraser University, and, and guy who got invited to the Hula Bowl and had a lot of NFL interest and, and they looked at him as a tight end because he is a unique athlete six foot seven 246 pounds and can run I'd like to see him in this game tonight big receiver it's Mills again third carry and a couple of carries of 11 yards and that first drive he gets six there and just across midfield yeah we will see more of Cole Tucker Reggie Bagleton who before his injury was second in the CFL in just the first couple of weeks in receiving had a big game against Ottawa they did get Malik Henry going we haven't seen him yet just yet tonight but really need Malik Henry to step up in the absence of Reggie Big so three rookies and then you got Henry in his third year Odom's Dukes in his second Hakuna Vanu in his third it's a young core this one in a second and five Mayor over the middle coming across but he can't Marshall back in the lineup for Saskatchewan after missing last week picking up the ball but Larry Dean making the play for the Riders yeah I'll we'll just take a look at those young receivers trying to go to work here this is Malik coming across he doesn't make the catch just in his third year keep in mind that's in slow motion they ruled that he didn't have control so no fumble but, you know, the, the downside is they're not experienced and you're going to see some mistakes. The upside is they don't know any better. And they're, and they're young guys trying to make a name for themselves, so they're hungry. So we'll see which one steps up tonight. Dave Dickinson had talked about it, saying difficult losing players to injury, but an exciting opportunity for some young players. Calgary has. It's very awkward. Coming in to knock him down right after the catch. Darius Williams on the special teams coverage for the Stamps. Well, one, one, and, one and one Saskatchewan Rough Riders coming into this one. And they're starting two new tackles. One with a tremendous resume, Gerald Hawkins, who out of LSU, tons of NFL. He was drafted by the Steelers in the fourth round back in 2016. Had some injury issues, played on different NFL teams. And he's a big man. He's, he's up there at left tackle out of LSU. And Colin Kelly, who we know. I mean, he's Patrick. he's been around and over 90 games so they're starting a couple of guys the first start of the season at tackle and this rider offense starts deep Jamal Mora takes it outside good carry for Morrow he gets it up across the 15 as we take a look at that rider offense yeah and when you look up front so the new tackles up there they're placing Brandon Council and Eric Lofton who started the first two games of the season so there's Kelly and Hawkins we'll watch them I'm wondering about their their wind and this 20 second huddle and getting back into that flow and again Sean Bain former Calgary Stampeder with a hundred yard game last week over 100 well over 100 and the most receiving yardage in that game for the Riders had 
the three touchdowns. On the ground in the second and short. Ball comes out. And it looked like Calgary may have had the recovery. See what they sort out here. It is indeed a Stampeder football on the fumble. And it looked like they'd had enough for the first down. It came out late. That Vodders that punches it out. Well, that's very close, isn't it? Like that, that, take a look at that left knee. Take a look at the left knee. And when it touches, he's got control right now. And the knee touches. And the knee is uh, touching. Knees, knees touching. I, I'm not sure that every turnover is automatically reviewed by the command center so they'll take a look at it as well you're thinking what i'm thinking yeah I, I look like his knee touched just prior to the ball coming out so they're taking a quick look on this turnover and then a the second person came in so y'all right, 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 right. love you megan after immediate review by the command center the, the Saskatchewan runner was down by contact at the 20-yard line. It'll be first down. From the referee, Tom Valesi. So, no fumble, Jamal Morrow. Riders keep the football, and they do get the first. It was a close one. But that's what review is for. Get the call right. That's when the system is working well. Exactly, and they did it very quickly there. Nice and quick, up at the 20 now. Second possession, Rodgers in a 3 nothing game early on here as week three continues in this young CFL regular season. Trevor Harris had some big numbers last week and then lost to Winnipeg, handing off again. To their word, they said they wanted to involve more and more, and he is involved. Is he ever involved? Another good carry for him in a first down. I think we're going to enjoy watching Jamal Morrow and, and Diedrich Mills, the two tailbacks in this game for both teams. And watch this second effort. I'll just let the pitchers do the talking here. That is sweet. He was having a great season for the Riders last year. 12 games in until he was injured. Down for the season. So the toss inside. Sean Bain, ex Peter. Saskatchewan is running the ball very well. Let's take a look at the Calgary defense. I was mentioning that front four had not registered a sack in two weeks. Well, they got one now. Derek Wigan got one that first series, so we could have highlighted him had we predicted that happening. Alway leads all tacklers in the Canadian Football League. After a couple of weeks with 17, Griffin moves to that linebacker, Sam linebacker spot, and Brandon Dozier is going to start at safety. Because of Titus Wall's injury, as you mentioned. Another first down on the ground. Saskatchewan on the move. Up to their 44. A little play fake this time. And a throw, and it's incomplete. Closest in the area, Tevin Jones, who had a big week last week against yeah. Winnipeg. Yeah, he just, he, this was just, uh, just not on the same page. It looked like Tevin Jones needed to curl in that soft spot, and that's exactly what Trevor Harris thought he was going to do. He's going to come in here, and this is what Harris thought he was going to do, and watch what he did. He comes down in here, and he sees that soft spot. Harris thought he would drop back into that hole, and he ran right through. Kevin Jones had nine catches for 121 yards last week against Winnipeg. Including a big one that set up their first touchdown, second and ten. Harris steps up, loses the ball as he's hit. Loose. And still it loose. fumbled back, and now into the hands of the Riders. Jake Winnicky. <laughs> wow. The net result is excellent for the green and white, but what an adventure. As we follow the bouncing ball here. Yeah, what just happened? What happened? What is going on? Because Calgary had two or three shots at this fall. Clearly a fumble right here. Like the ball's out, no question about that. Now it's loose, it's live. Look at the Calgary trying to scoop it up rather than, than dive on it. But Winnicky comes in, hustles back, and saves the day. Not only that, he recovers it past the marker, so they got 10 yards out of it. They don't draw it up that way, but it's a 12-yard game. Take it any way you can, I guess. Across midfield and a first down. And it's Morrow running again. And running well inside the 35, down close to the 32. And much
much of this drive has been on the ground, whether intentional or otherwise, a pickup of 22 yards. That looked like it had to be a good down block here to get Morrow out and around the edge. And let's see, because he has nobody outside. Let's see the down block. That's the right tackle. He's going to go down, wash down inside. Didn't have to get any of, of Mike Rose. He just made him go around him. Last week, Jamal Morrow with 20 yards the entire game. He has 50 yards rushing. Clearly, yeah, clearly Kelly Jeffrey committed to the run here. They said they wanted to do it more, and they have been. But there's a pass and a big one, too. For a first down, Saskatchewan on the move. And now inside the 15, it's Emelis, who had the game of his life last week against Winnipeg with his first three CFL touchdowns. And take a look at this tight end formation, but you know those those runs early for Jamal Morrow has pulled the linebackers for Calgary closer to the line of scrimmage. That's why that quick hot over the middle to Emelis in that from that tight end spot was so successful. Running the ball, helping set it up. A first and ten of the Stamps 15. Ninth play of the drive. Back to the ground. And Morrow again and north south driving it forward. TJ Rayham. Riding him down, but a five yard gain, five more on the ground, Saskatchewan. Kelly, Kelly Jeffrey calling a good game as he as he said he would this week, that he wants to get that run established, settle in the two tackles that are playing their first game of the season, and let them fire off the football with that whole offensive line and then play action out of it. Very different looking rider offense than what we saw a week ago. And Harris to throw to the end zone and very close to the sideline and Sean Bain does not hang on. So a third down is coming up and the field goal unit will come on to see if they can tie this game. Sean Bain runs a nice route here. He's there and so is the ball. And Trevor Harris has to lead him out front. He reaches for it. Both hands on it and just flat drops it. Could add a touchdown there. Bain. That close. Can't hang on. So Lather is in for the field goal try and a short one. About 18 yards. Corsac putting it down. Impressive drive, Saskatchewan. A flag is out. See what this flag is. It'd be big. Because they're right around. It was about third and six. Depending on who it's against, against Calgary. This this drive, by the way, started on Saskatchewan's own seven yard line. So after review by the video official, there's no flag on the play. So they pick up the flag and the field goal stands and we've got a tie game as mentioned on an impressive drive a lot of it running by Saskatchewan back comes Jake Mayer in the Calgary offense 3-3 three, three. tomorrow on the CFL on TSN Chad Kelly in the Argos Taylor Cornelius and the Eugene Lewis and there's Winton McManus too. It's the Elks and the Argos. Edmonton shut out their last game in Toronto. Looking pretty good beating Hamilton last week. Hello, Winton McManus. Yeah, look at the far. camera there. Don't mess with Winton. Woo. Former Stampeder. That gives you a shiver for a second. So the Elks and the Argos tomorrow. Short kick and it is bobbled by Long. And who touched it last? The Riders did. Longley coming in for it. Lather choosing to kick it his way. Well, it's, it's a pooch kick, Rod. It's it's one of those ones. It's not to the deep guy. It's in that it's in that spot where the deep guy can't get to it. That third level or the middle level of the kick return team. And this time it's Longley trying to get there. Now you just have to tap it out of bounds. You have to be the last to touch it. Henderson gets it, tips it out before he goes out of bounds. That's Saskatchewan football. Wow, brilliant special teams work by Amari Henderson, who is the field half as well. And the defense can stay on the sideline. Saskatchewan football. Samuel Emelis is in his second year. 
Until last week against Winnipeg, he'd never scored a touchdown. Well, he got one early on. Late in the first half, he got another to get the Riders close. And to start the second half, he got another to put them at that time ahead of Winnipeg. What a day for Emelis with more. Let's go down to field level and Britt Dorn. Man, you know what he told me? I've never in my entire life, all the way back to minor football, scored three touchdowns. And I'm glad that I did it when I turned pro. He said his phone was blowing up after that one. And quarterback Trevor Harris said, well, hey, it doesn't surprise me. He's been winning his one-on-one -on -one matchups since back at camp. So I didn't mean for him to be my primary target last week it just so happened he was the guy who was getting past the defense but Emelis gave the love right back and said hey well Trevor Harris is the best quarterback I've ever played for so he makes it easy to catch those balls so a little bit of brotherly love and chemistry already going on just three weeks into the season guys yeah Britt Harris was very effusive in his praise didn't know a lot about him kind of flying under the radar when he came over from Montreal and he knew in training camp as Britt was talking about this guy's good he not bashful at all about getting them the ball. After automatic review by the cam command center, it was to determine that the Saskatchewan player who touched the ball landed out of bounds. So it'll be Calgary ball. Oh. Amari Henderson. Well, let's go back to knocked this. it out. Yeah, let's and go back because Amari Henderson, he tipped it out before he was out. So he's not out of bounds when he touches it. And then. He's down inbounds. He's down inbounds. I'm, I'm not. I'm confused here. But saying that he was out of bounds, I guess. Longley bobbles it. Henderson. Oh, the hand touches out of bounds before his knee. Okay, let's go back and take a look one more time at that. Because I was looking at his knee after he touched it. Left hand tips it. Let's look at the left hand. It's the left hand. Wow, that's wow. close. That is so yep. close. It, it's true. That's so if the hand touches down before the knee, then he is out of bounds. And then they've moved the ball now to the Calgary 40. And Craig Dickinson getting an explanation and seems to be reluctantly accepting it now as Calgary will stop. Taken down there after a gain of four by Larry Dean. Well, that's a, a huge break for the Calgary really Stampeders is. and plus territory that the command center noticed that Anderson was out of bounds. Therefore, it was the person who touched it prior to that, which would have been the returner long leg. So the second and six now, Sam Peters at their 44. Four-man rush with time and a crossing route to one of the rookie receivers we talked about. That is Clark Barnes for a gain of four. And that is his seventh catch of his young career. But it's not enough for a first down. So, so with a third and two coming up, Cody Grace will come on to punt this one away. Side is 15 for this one. By last year's top punt in net yardage. Cody Grace, booming punt of 57 yards. Alfred starts the return from his five and gets it up about to the 15. Trevor Harris coming back on. Britt just talked about Samuel Emelis in that three touchdown performance last week. Here's what Trevor Harris had to say about it. I think on Sam's second touchdown, I went through one, two, three, four. They covered it up really well and just escaped the pocket. He did scramble rules perfectly and made a diving catch. And so, you know, he's just, he's making plays. And, uh, you know, we are, we're going to need him to make a lot of plays this year. And I think he's going to, yeah, obviously, you know, broke out last week, but I think he's going to continue uh, to have those performances. Pretty special. I mean, three touchdowns. You, you scored three touchdowns in Saskatchewan. Everyone wants to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> Whether he wants to talk about it or not, they're going to be definitely, if he keeps that up, passing off to the left now for Taylor Jones. And great out of bounds. 
Evans. Uh, Trey, he was hit by Trey Roberson there, so incomplete. Yeah, so that was that tied a rider record three touchdowns in one game. And there's some by a Canadian, and there's pretty impressive names on that list. Andy Fantus. I was going to say, and you got a couple old teammates there. Yeah, Jeff Fairholme and Ray Elgar. 1988. Emelis from Montreal. That is college ball in Louisiana Tech. And drafted in the first round last year. Second and ten. Off to the left again. And too far. Intended for Morrow. Who's wanting a call here. Yeah, Morrow wants a challenge from his head coach here on this one. Because he felt like he was grabbed in pursuit of that deep ball. Moros exits the backfield and then he's going to run the, the wheel route here on Mike Awe. And you see the, the reach, a little hand grab, but I think that's a good no call by the officials. Got to have a little uh, hand fighting down the field. Corsak standing at the rider goal line on this third down. Another great punt by this Aussie. Chasing Logan back to his 30, a 65 yard. And the return up over the 40 with a flag coming out. Turn the return, illegal block. Calgary number 48, 10 yard penalty, first down. Jake Mayer, a rookie just two years ago, but a leader now and had this to say about the role he plays in the excitement and leading these young receivers he has. If anything, it's my job to make their lives easier and to, you know, make things make sense for them and to keep their confidence up and, uh, you know, just allow them to play free because I remember being in their shoes as a rookie and that was the biggest thing for me was just, hey, play free, just cut it loose, live with the results later. Because um, you know you have a lot to learn when you're young, but you also have the ability to, to turn some heads when you're young. They're throwing now, and that is long life, incomplete, second down ahead. Interesting to hear Mayor talk. So it's just a couple of years ago, he was the rookie. Bo Levi Mitchell got hurt. He gets his opportunity of three starts, and now to hear him now, and, and rightfully so, sounding like a, a veteran, even though he has not played that much himself. Yeah, I mentioned that off the top, that this is just start number 15 for him, and he does have some talent, though. I mean, and, I, and I'm not talking just about the Canadians that we pointed out, but Odom's Duke is coming on, and he is a he is a guy to watch. 25 years old out of South Florida. Looks deep, right side. And intended for Hakuna Vanu. Too far and two and out. Third two and out for I'm, Stampede. I'm Thomas. wondering, Rod, how much wind is down there. It doesn't look like it from the flags, but that's a second deep throw from Jake Mayer that, that it looked like the wind caught it and it just sails past the deep road. I mean, when you look at the flags here, although it's tricky in McMahon Stadium, it swirls a little bit. I was going to say, that makes that last punt by Corsak that much more impressive. <laughs> he had a 65-yarder uh, against the breeze. And now we see Grace again. A couple of Australian putters, and the riders nearly got to that one. Alfred chased back inside his 20. Michael Griffin misses a chance to get him as he finally is thrown down. By Young, Perry Young, pushing him out of bounds. What a crazy first quarter we have seen. Calgary took it down the field, got a field goal. Saskatchewan answered. We got a tie game for the first 50. First quarter numbers, well, the lack of passing yardage certainly stands out, especially for Calgary, but these teams have been able to establish the running game, especially Saskatchewan in this 3-3 tie. And, yeah, I mean, it's early in the season, and it's a Western showdown, but this is a very different schedule for Saskatchewan from what they had a year ago. Yeah, this is an important game in a lot of ways because for both these teams, they start with Western opponents. I mean, for the first six games of the season, the Riders will play Western opponents. They've already played Edmonton, Winnipeg, and they're playing Calgary. Calgary tonight they'll play Calgary again 
and BC and, and four into the first five for Calgary. So again, you, you know, you want to set the tone early in the West Division. You got to win these these divisional matchups. They're all so important. And it was interesting a couple of nights ago with BC winning in Winnipeg to go to three and zero. The Bombers second place at two and one, and the winner of this game would tie Winnipeg in second in the West. Kevin Jones takes it. Kobe Williams comes in and he takes him down for no gain. Boy, that's that's just a great tackle in the open field by Williams because you know you get this is the play you get one block you get the corner and there's a and there's a play to be made there but that's that's film study right there or video study now or what do they call tablet study now I guess is the way it's described. I still even though film has been gone for decades. I know still I saying still it's, like it's, a it's a football it's football vernacular. Check the film. It just sounds Check great. Oh, in and out of the hands of Winnicky. And Kobe Williams again, a factor in that play. Right on Williams and uh, and a two and out. Well, this is a nice looking secondary in Calgary. I mean, this is, uh, you know, Kobe Williams in his third year. You got Natrell Jamerson who's playing out in the corner. Trey Roberson's already made a couple of plays and, and moving Brandon Dozier to safety. I mean, that's a position he's very comfortable with. So this this is a very good secondary Calgary Stampeders. So it is Adam Corsak. With college in Rutgers, he's from Melbourne, Australia, and that is Peyton Logan. 20, standing near the 20. And backing up to the 15 to take a, another good pump by Corsak. Breaking it straight up the middle. And a good return there by Logan to get it up across the Stamp Peter 40. Well, the other thing about this game and how important it is is for Dave Dickinson to get back in that in that winning the winning ways in McMahon. I mean, this place was so hard to get a win for the visiting team for so many years. I mean, 30 wins, six losses overall. But you just take a look at the the home struggles of late. And out of the game, though, remember nine and zero, I believe, at yeah. home in his yeah. first season as head coach, 2016. Then a couple of seven and twos. And since then, it's gone sideways at home. First and ten. Jake Mayer in a 3 3 tie. Wide open. Hakuna Vanu wide open after the catch, too. Luther Hakuna Vanu inside the Saskatchewan 40. Yeah, you see his running style again. Another young receiver just finding his way, but a, a, a huge, big athlete. I mean, six foot four, 210 pounds, and you can see he's a long strider. Watch him every step. He's going about four or five yards. It seems like 31 yard gain for Akuna Vanna. For the Edmonton native in his third year out of York, 31 yards, easily his biggest reception of this young season. And on the first down, back to Mills, and not much there up against that rider front. Pete Robertson in on that tackle. You know, Pete Robertson crashes down at this. At, at some point, Jake Mayer is going to have to pull this. I mean, you know, this crash down action here to get to the tailback is is automatic if you're just running the ball and you're not pulling it ever. So you get, at, to keep the defensive ends, you know, true, and keep them outside and open up a seam for the tailback. Jake Mayer is going to have to pull that one or two times. Good inside play for a guy we know on the outside. Led the Riders with nine sacks last year, seven early in the season before he got hurt. He missed a chunk of time. The knee injury. Second and nine. Mayer flushed out to the right. It's hit at the line of scrimmage. Knocked down by the Riders. De Beer, I think. Charbel De Beer. Yes. Big 99. He gets a start at defensive tackle. Marcus Christmas out, and with Moncrief coming onto the lineup and starting at linebacker. Big man up there, right over center, and Sean McEwen, the leaders of that group, gets washed to the outside and hands up. Nice. So Cody Grace will put this one down for Renee Paredes. Is one for one. This outside the 45 and Paredes. Money in the bank again. He missed his first two field goal tries of the season against BC a couple of weeks ago. He has been perfect since then. De Beers play limited to three and a 6-3 Calgary advantage. Or that's
that's what the pros do, don't they? If they're lucky. I just quoted Kramer from, <laughs> from Seinfeld. Sorry. And we continue. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm 21 under. If par is 200, I got that nail. <laughs> You do continue with those references. You started in Vancouver. That's Moro on the one yard carry and hit a lot of yardage in the first quarter. Very busy for him carrying the ball. And they, as mentioned, it talked about wanting to get him more involved after last week. Second and nine. 6-3 Stamp Peters first meeting of the year between these two traditional West rivals in a three-man rush and it's complete to Jake Winnicky from Trevor Harris that combination of course we knew from Montreal last year and the year before when Harris came over and a gain of 12 for Saskatchewan and a first down yeah Gerald Hawkins did a nice job of, of blocking his man past Trevor Harris but he gets rolled on I believe and is down and take a look at the big left tackle as he's in that pass pro he's going to take Vodders and run him by Trevor Harris and then from behind he gets rolled up on and grabs that right knee Gerald Hawkins his first year out of LSU they had to, as you talked about two different tackles the first two games it's rare to see a switch of both left and right tackle for one game once they were ready to go Craig Dickinson wanted to put them in and now he gets some attention on the field. There's Gerald Hawkins making his CFL debut today in the first half. He has to be taken off in a cart with an apparent left knee injury. Yeah, it's just unfortunate here because he gets he gets rolled on after a good block on Vodders and it, it, again in his very first game in the Canadian Football League and just that knee gets rolled on. So they make the change up front on the old line. Logan Bandy is into this game, number 69. On the ground, Jamal Morrow. Bandy got time after Dan Clark got injured early last season in Edmonton. Bandy had a lot of games at center. His second year out of Calgary. Played for the Dinos. So they move, they move Furlan, Logan Furland out to left tackle. Bandy in a guard and leave Peter Godber at center. Second down now after that carry by Morrow. On the ground again. Jamal Morrow. Not quite a first down, but it'll be a third and short coming up. You just wonder this, this the third and short for coaches in the Canadian Football League as we watch Furlan on this playing that tackle spot now. It's a kickout block, but coaches, you know, are that that one yard zone where they'll go for it on third down is stretching to a yard and a half these days with the athletic quarterbacks running short yardage. They're going to leave them on the field. They're on the Calgary side, not by much. The stats 49 in the third and two, and they're going for it. That is shotgun Harris. Handing off to Morrow again who tries to plow his way down, and he does. Third and two, and he got three or four there in five yards he got from our statistician Dave Boyer as he gets it inside the 45. Yeah, Craig Dickinson likes this because you know he was anxious on a third and two to not just turn it over on downs, but real good blocking and push up front gives Morrill that room, and that's just a bit of a sigh of release, I, relief, I would say, over there for the head coach. Putting a lot of faith in Morrow in the running game in this one. And back to him. Right side. Pushing down to about the 40. Now I will say too, it's in that, it's in that bubble zone when the where the ball was that you know they sometimes will not punt from there because you're just basically going for a single anyway. So worth the risk at that place on the field. Yeah, exactly. And and not surprised to see Morrow back involved again because you've got the changes up front the O line and now they're trying to say let's settle down the O line let them run block first and a pretty nice job up front 
I haven't talked to too many old linemen in history that have preferred pass blocking. <laughs> when they get a chance to shoot off and hit somebody, like the running game. Second down, taking the moral and completing that one to Bain. And that one close to another first down inside the 35. I just love the chess match of football when when an offensive coordinator and Kelly Jeffrey goes run tomorrow run tomorrow run tomorrow and then he says you know what now we'll pull it on the fake tomorrow and just throw this little one to Bain over the middle. I just one two plays in a row three plays four plays in a row for Kelly Jeffrey sets up that key first down, or second down throw to move the chains. For possession, time of possession, too. That's it's the eighth play of this drive. They had a long drive in the first order, too, as Harris just pulls it down and slides. Couldn't find anyone. And a flag comes out as he just slid down for a gain of four. It looks like this is going to be holding against Saskatchewan. Holding Saskatchewan number 51. Ten yard penalty. Repeat first down. That's Peter Godber at center. No change there. He started the game in that spot. So let's take a look. Brent Monson gets now his defense in a, in a good situation because they're they'll do down over but now they've holding call up front yeah you can see the jersey pull on top on TJ Ram God who doesn't let him redirect and get to Trevor Harris so it's a first and 20 riders push back and off to the left Receivers for Saskatchewan, Kendall Watson, in his first CFL catch, and he didn't go anywhere. Yeah, you know what? That's not working on that side. Kobe Williams has got that shut down. That's a, that's the a second or third play that he's made out there on very similar attempts, and and now all of a sudden you get in second along. Your defense from Brent Monson gets more confidence, but we've seen a couple of plays by Kobe Williams from the halfback spot just stepping up and, and taking that down right away. A loss of five, and with that holding penalty, last two plays have gone 15 yards the other way. A second and 25 to Stamps 49 for Harris. Quickly off to the right again tomorrow, and he gets knocked down. After breaking one tackle, it's Cameron Judge. And forcing a long third down here for the Riders. Now the Riders do have the wind and they're going to line up for a long field goal here. We'll take a look at the tackle by Cam Judge has an interception that against BC in the opening game of the season for Calgary. They lost to the Lions that week. This one with the breeze as his back 52 yards. Wilders hit them further than that. It's put down tie the game again it's heading left heading left and it is wide and it is the rookie Clark Barnes bringing it out has a good return as he breaks a couple cuts it back inside a flag is out and Tevin Jones really pushes him out so they missed the chance to tie Six three. Diedrich Bills in it running back for the injured Kadeem Carey, and he had a couple of games and great games against Saskatchewan last year. But carrying the football isn't the only thing he likes about this game. Let's go back to Brett. Yeah, same thing that he prides himself on is his pass protection. He's really a team guy. He said, I love helping out the O-line. I love help keeping my quarterback on his feet. And I love making guys regret coming and trying to hit me because I hit them back even harder. So then I asked quarterback Jake Mayer about him, and he said, oh, yeah, that completely describes him. He's the type of guy that you flinch whenever you watch him because he literally believes nobody can tackle him. And one word he used to describe him, fearless. So kind of like how you describe you guys. <laughs> yeah. And we're really fearless up here at the booth just watching the game. Brett, well, you know, the guy beside me, he can lay it out down on the field. Uh, that's that's what I, you know, I mean, you can see that in Diedrich Mills. I mean, you can see how he uh, searches out contact. I mean, he'll get into the second level, and a lot of running backs are trying to run to space. He's searching out contact to go and attack the defenders. It, you know, Kadeem Carey is one of the top running backs in the CFL. He's been no great, question. but not bad as a backup. And Dave Dickinson and Jake are both saying he's kind of like Kadeem Carey, younger version. Enthusiastic, 
Loves the additional role. Good team guy. Great in the room. Tough. A little fake to him. As finds an open receiver. It is Malik Henry in a first down. Calgary up at the 38. Yeah, this is this is an on time. This is the this is the type of throw that as soon as you get open on that second cut, there you're fear Malik Henry. The ball arrives. It's a nice 19-yard gain back to back off of play action to Dietrich Mills. But yeah, I just that's the type of running back. We had a great discussion with him and talked about his days back with Nebraska. But he's he started out playing for Georgia Tech in his freshman year. And ended up getting to the Gator Bowl. So nice catch by Henry over the middle off the play action. CJ Revis is being removed from this game for concussion protocol, we are told. Spotters saw something they didn't they didn't like and and he was asked to remove him and go through protocol. So a change at safety again for the Riders. Jake Mayer, four for nine in this game. Because Calgary's been running the football so much. Well, this is Jackson Ford now getting a chance to play. And he was impressive in training camp and played well on the teams. And he, of course, is the grandson of Al Ford, who is a great player for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders back in the 60s and 70s. Great cup champion as a player in 66. And... A GM, in fact, one I know quite well because I was there in 89. Negotiated and your contract? In 94, so sat down with Al Ford to negotiate contracts, and he was always fantastic. We got early movement on the line. Pete Robertson coming in against Jake Mayer. He and Anthony Lanier met at Mayer to take him down, and it looked like Robertson got the early jump. Wow, that was a, that was a hit that... Offside, Saskatchewan number 45. Five yard penalty, second down repeated. You know, and, and officials will, will let the play go when it's really close. When it's when it's really close, they're gonna let the play go because it's a free play with the penalty flag on the ground for the offense. But this is the downside of that because it happens so quick. Jake Mayer takes a pretty big shot on a play that didn't count. And they took him out, Tommy Stevens in, although it is short yardage, that's why Stevens is in. Carry that across. Keep the drive going as Mayer does come back out again. Three minute warning until halftime. Low scoring, close game. Calgary leads it by three. I can finally debate another comic book expert, Paul LaPolice, on who saved the world more times, just Batman or the Avengers? Matt, he's busy. Milt? Conda forever, baby. Avengers assemble. No debate. He's got this image of Shinetti having Lapo at Comic-Con. Those guys would be in heaven. <laughs> They'll keep it to this game. At the end. Deep ball. Henry just off the fingertips. A little bit closer. He could have had six. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It was that close. Right at the bottom of your screen, you see the end of it there. But you could see that Henry Timer, got... Timer, can we please put 2.34 on the clock? Thank you. Serious separation on, on Nick Marshall. And Marshall went, okay, you got me there. He had him just a bit too far. Second and 10, Calgary 51. They have a three-point lead. And this their longest drive. They started way back at their five. Mayor. Oh, in and out of the hands of the intended receiver there, Clark Burns. So two quick plays out of that three-minute break. And they're heading on for the off for the punting unit. Yeah, I think Micah Tights might have got his hand in there and knocked this down. It, because the 
take a look at at the route here because he, he breaks out and Micah Tights is going to just get on that inside shoulder with with deep help. You know he's got a guy over the top so he can stay underneath this throw. Well no actually Barnes just dropped it had a chance at it. The downside of the young guys. Missed a chance there. 50 yard caught off it. Keep his feet and a flag does come out. And Alford will forget the flag for a moment, just thinking of what might have been if he just could have kept During his the return, feet. Holding. Saskatchewan number 31. Wouldn't have Ten-yard penalty. First down. Would have been coming back anyway, but a good burst of speed in space for Mario Alford. Take another look at this, and he had. A, I just saw that lane open up, and for a guy with his speed, I, this he is gone here. Just a shoestring trip. Now I, we've looked back. We've looked back at the penalties that have been called on the returns. One for missed field goal. That one, they're penalties. So you know, you, if you're a Calgary fan or a Ryder fan, you get mad at the refs all you want. But at the end of the day, they were penalties, and. Players got to make better decisions, especially when you have returners like we have in the CFL. If, you, if your guy is out of position and you're going to have to grab him to make the block, don't do it because they can make people miss. Alford coming in, second to Janarian Grant and combined yards in the CFL. In over two minutes, Harris runs into his own man and this, this red wave there as well as he is taken down. That's Derek Wigan already is a sack. The first one for a defensive lineman this season for Calgary. Yeah, it was a, it was a good push by the entire D line. I mean, the, the entire D line got pushed up and, and reestablished themselves in the Saskatchewan backfield, and then it just all the blocking schemes are messed up, and it's called just creating havoc from inside the defensive line. Big second and 19 here. Still lots of time in the clock. Three-man rush coming. Harris getting it away. And good coverage after the catch. Cameron Judge coming in to limit the damage after that catch by Tevin Jones for four yards. And a third down coming up. Yeah, you start to get the feeling that that, that side with Cameron Judge playing over there with Kobe Williams, the, the tackling for them in the first half has been outstanding. I mean, they... They are not letting these quick hitches or quick slants turn into big plays after the catch. Corsack standing about five yards deep. It's a three-point game near halftime. He does put it away with the wind at his back, and he's boom some, and this is pretty good too, a 53-yarder. But still, it'll be... Good field position here as Logan works his way close to midfield. 124 on the clock. Older brother against the younger brother. You know, every time they meet, the question has come up several times, like eight times now at least, <laughs> but the matchup. So you think they're going to be tired of hearing about it, and they know it's coming. But Craig did say how you know, thrilled he still is to be able to coach against his brother. Just to be involved in the same game. And their, their parents were up for the weekend. They're not at the game, but yeah. Craig was saying they'd have a chance to have dinner with them as they, they come up and uh, well, I, they'd be wearing a lot of red and green or neither I assume. Yeah and you know I, I love when we talk to him on Zoom and, and we talk to both coaches and, and ask the question again you know is, it's it's been happening for so many years is it still a thing and they they both went ah nah not really not really and then went on for about 15 <laughs> minutes they, about how it was a cool didn't. thing. <laughs> well the bragging rights have gone as we pointed out at the start to little brother Dave. One. Well, there was a West final. But I was just going to say, yeah. there was one playoff game that was great one. The Riders beat them in 2021 in the postseason. Derek Moncrief. There you go. An all-star in 2022, despite playing with a bad shoulder. He had surgery in November, which delayed the start of his season. The debut is happening today. Well, you knew it wouldn't be long. I mean, he had to get his feet under him when you get back after an injury and you haven't played for a while. It, it takes some time. But he is a unique athlete defensively. I mean, he, he is like the Daryl Hall. Remember Daryl Hall back? He kind of started the tweener here in Calgary. He's that kind of guy. Alford again won't get a crack at it as it hits the turf and then it rolls out of bounds that looks like right at the 20-yard line. 
49 seconds. Because you know, clock. you know, Rod, when you when you take a DB like C.J. Rivas, you take a smaller guy and you play him down at Sam. Great cover guys, obviously, but they're they're a little light in the backside when it comes to taking on a pulling guard in the run game or something like that. Or you play a bigger linebacker who's really good in the run game, but tough to cover when you get him out in open space. He does both. He he can do both because he's that type of athlete. Sam being strong side linebacker, Will being yes, weak side. But yes. it's interesting how that position has evolved since you're talking about it. More of a coverage position, but he is the strength of a sack there by James Vodders back in the CFL this year for the first time since 2018. And the defensive line for the Stampeders, they're finally picking up their sacks in this game. Yeah, you know, and you know that they've looked at the stats and they never said it. You know, no one said it this week. That's three man pressure, too, with, with a back in there as well. And just beating your man but they they looked at it and went okay two weeks in and our d-line does not have a sack well, both those guys do tonight Derek Wigan and Vodders went away to the NFL for a while but picked up a ring with Calgary back in 2018 just a couple of plays left in this half Riders handing off again to Morrow side find some room gets a first down up across the 30 with 18 seconds to go until we head back to these guys Matthew Shinetti doing a great job sitting in for Kate this weekend Milt Stiegel Davis Sanchez Matt Dunnigan well two of the three on the right there want to see more passing but I know our quarterback understands how important that run game, especially establishing it in the first half, is. And both these teams have done that with Morrow and Saskatchewan and, of course, Dedrick Mills with Calgary. What a catch here by Samuel Emmons. Yeah. Up for it. All right. Go up and get it. One or two, just a poster shot. Remember posters? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> the classic poster shot. Just wonder too about the confidence, the infusion that he would get from the game, like the one he had last week against. Oh yeah. Oh, it's just, it's. Go. Last play. It's caught. No, it's not. Oh, and it's like MLS will shake it up a bit on that. As the clock goes down to zeros. A chance for another catch for Amelis, but Great Lenius is in. out, Schaefer Baker is out, Darrell Walker is out, and that was Brandon Dozier coming from deep outside third to get a shot on Sam Amelis there. Well, it it has been it's been a low scoring game, but some interesting points to it, the running game and also some crazy fumbles and near turnovers and for Trevor Harris not quite the same certainly not passing wise as he had last week against Winnipeg as we head down to Brett and Diedrich Mills all right well Diedrich not a very offensive half just field goals on the board for points right now so it's going to be key to get it rolling in the second half here I mean just come go in the locker room and focus back up everybody get back to themselves um, and, and execute and come back out executing the plays and knowing what we're supposed to do so you know what I mean we just got to go in and go in the locker room and focus back up for real what are you noticing from the riders defense right now um say from the right receivers they uh um, receivers doing a pretty good job catching the ball um getting the ball and making getting yak yards you know and getting the ball up getting the ball upfield so i'm really proud of the receivers and they're doing a good job blocking on the edges for the runs and stuff so they're doing really good awesome thanks so much thank you uh, exactly when you hear Jedrick mills lapo alongside also maddie and milt as well uh talking about blocking from the receivers it's because there isn't a lot of deep plays going on a lot of moving with the football throwing but a lot of rushing particularly for the riders what are you seeing well uh, the first of all with the injury at the left tackle position mm -hmm. guys and furland having to go out from guard to left tackle running the football is going to be important you mm -hmm. saw that sack happen right before the half they've got to make sure they can establish the run which i thought they did well in the first half get more of some care they're able to bounce the ball outside because they're going to need to stay in manageable positions with the football, right? Like they pop some really nice runs here. That's got to be a staple going forward so Trevor can pull, uh, pull the ball on the outside and throw it. Here's a, one of the biggest runs. The line goes in this direction. 
right? The defensive line are looking at the offensive line. The back spills the other way. That's what you call a wrong way run where you're trying to fool the defense to take two steps and you let the speed get out on the perimeter, guys. So they've got to make sure they can execute the run game going forward because they haven't passed the ball great and they had that injury. Yeah, and Lapo, you know, in a tight game like this, big plays, field position, everything counts. And uh, I really like the aggressiveness of Craig Dickinson trying to flip-flop his, his record against his brother, Dave Dickinson, on the other sideline. William Langley, eight-year player from Sherbrooke, can't handle the pooch kick. And it looks like Amari Henderson is the Johnny on the spot. Excellent play. He lays out on the sidelines. Let's take a couple more looks at it and figure this out. He goes in the air. He touches the ball legally and bounds. Looks like his right foot is on the ground right there. So everything's good. But the officials, they take another look at it. Rule that his left hand touched out of bounds first. And the ball or the body of the player has to be in bounds for that to be a legal touch. But here, another look. Not sure you're going to see it there, but I think his right foot is already down. He touches the ball. Looks like Saskatchewan's football, but it's overturned. Calgary maintains possession. Good for William Langley because he didn't have to eat that tomorrow in film. So I can tell you this is a heads-up play by Craig Dickinson who made his living before coming head coach as a special teams coach in this league and is considered one of the best. And I thought it was a big-time move, Milt, for him to uh, step up to the plate and, uh, and make that call. And it looked like it was executed well, but the officials didn't see it that way. Now, right. the one thing, Milt, uh, we talked about it last night with <laughs> the Ticats not really securing the football. Yes. Uh, and when Dietrich Mills is talking about blocking from the receivers, it's because they're not doing their job on the other end. And right. I know that annoys you. It does. And, and, and Paul spoke of the running game. The running game has been working. And as a quarterback, when you look at these stats, you say these quarterbacks are stinking it up. And they're not stinking it up. <laughs> it's the receivers who aren't making plays. Yeah. When you get the opportunities to make these plays, as a receiver, you have to do it. The quarterback sits back there getting hit. The offensive line is trying to do their best in the receiver. Our job is not too difficult. We just have to catch the ball. And I know these guys aren't attempting to drop the ball, but you're not going to get to too many of these opportunities. A lot of times, the game is decided on who can make the most big plays. You're wondering why this game is 6-3, to three because neither one of these teams are taking advantage of making yeah, those big yeah. plays. So it'll be interesting to see who can come out in the second half and make some of those big and, plays. And one more things coming up one more injury up front a defensive lineman's coming over to play offensive line so Casey yeah. Seals do that right. Hamilton, in Hamilton a few times weeks. already this year uh, thank you producer Troy when you have a game like this six to three you have a stat like this just two field goals shy of 500 for Rene Paredes six three he's got 500 congratulations Renee Welcome to Calgary, the Bull River, beautiful city, and a great day for a CFL game. Steps up, loses the ball as he's hit. Loose. And still loose. fumbled back. What an adventure. We follow the bouncing ball oh, here. Yeah, man. what just happened? What happened? Wide open. Hakuna Vanu and wide open after the catch, too. Only one start for Chad Kelly, but we've already entered the what could have been. Edmonton traded Kelly's rights to Toronto for Nick Arbuckle back in October 2021. Kelly already led Toronto to a home win. It'll be 1,352 days since Edmonton's last home win. You've heard that a lot. Kate will be with you tomorrow at 7 o'clock. You know, guys, uh, last night we were talking about what might have to happen in Hamilton, uh, drastic changes and the like, and then we saw Chris Edwards mm -hmm. shove Austin Mack at the end and Orlando Steinauer's reaction. And Milt, if the public could have seen your reaction, oh it goodness. was as close to disgust as you're going to get. Right. I mean, I imagine as all, two Hall of Famers and a coach, you guys must be really upset at that. And, and let me start off by saying I'm not attacking this young man's character. I don't know him well enough to call him a coward. But that move right there was a coward move. And I don't know what provoked this, if anything provoked it at all. If you're that mad at him after a game, my thing is if you want to fight him, let him know you want to fight him. Mm. I've, I've had people after games who wanted to fight me, and they said, I want to fight you, Milton. Of course, I walked away. They called me a punk, called me soft. I can deal with that. But the fact that you try to go up there and shake his hand, and then you push him, that is a straight coward move. Mm. Orlando Steiner, their coach, I played against him for years. I guarantee you, he's as mad as he is about that move than he is about losing that game. So there need to be some tough consequences that this young man needs to go through. Yeah, Milt, uh, we talked about it, and um, I don't 
I don't know what was said, if anything was said, in order to draw that type of, you know, it looked like Austin Mack was extending his hand. I right. don't know what he said, if he said anything. He may have said, hey, it was fun beating your butt, you right. know? Right. And then Miami takes a shot, which he deserves. I don't know if that happened or not, but uh, I did I did write down, boy, that shot in 81 Austin Mack, that, that uh, epitomizes why I think that Chris Edwards was changed uniforms this past season. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think Toronto um, uh, moved on, and I, and I really believe that Hamilton um, needs to handle this, and I think they'll handle it within. And I don't think we'll hear much about it. And uh, mm. I think this, I think, I think, uh, I think uh, this is something that definitely needs to be handled by uh, Orlando Steinhauer very quickly. Yeah, and and discipline's been an issue for them with the penalties, right? They have to address this. They have to talk to the player. You got to improve. You can't be doing these things. No. We can't control it, right? And then the last thing is everybody, everybody. There's a special team score last night. There's a defense defense that got scored. Defense had a return, or the offense did on them. Everybody took their turns last night. They got to get in the room and get figure it figured it out. out. Yep. Yep. Orlando Steinhauer's yep. mantra this year is ego. Drop the E and go. You wonder in a couple of weeks if that might mean a tough decision when it comes to Chris Edwards. We'll be back. no part of the Batman Avengers debate, so he's got to get in on stats. What do you see, Matty? Well, um, not a lot there, Matthew, but the stout, <laughs> stout defense is for sure. And let me just uh, reiterate what I heard from the telecast earlier. Rene Paradis, 500th of his career. Congratulations. Uh, Rene's a good guy. Well, we'll see if the offense, and particularly the Rough Riders offensive line, is going to hold up because the Calgary Stampeders are coming after them. Second half after this. Halftime in Calgary, and the Riders trailed the Stamp 6-3, much as Saskatchewan's offense provided on the ground by Jamal Morrow, who's standing by with Brett. All right, Jamal, not much to say for points in that first half. So what was the word in the locker room in order to find the back of the end zone here? Yeah, we just got to finish jobs. I mean, we'll get moving on the field. We just got to stay consistent on offense and finish jobs and make plays. Well, you yourself, you had 87 rushing yards in that first half. So what is working for you tonight? We just got to stay physical. All lines doing a great job of getting off the ball. So we just got to stay consistent at that, you know, wear them down that second half. I think we'll come out victorious. Awesome. Thanks so much, Jamal. Yeah, happy birthday, Matt. That's a great blaze, by the way. <laughs> It is a great blazer. He is right, Britt. I like that blazer. Very nice blazer. <laughs> Talked about that blazer. We, Britt looked at my tie and she said, okay, good, neutral. Yeah. So you're not a green tie or a red tie. And she said, that's one of the reasons I picked pink. Yeah. You, you, you got to be careful. These two teams. <laughs> yeah. and your choice, red or green, I, you know, find something neutral. Although, Britt made a great choice. I yes. agree with Jamal Moore. Yeah, and the, well, and the color of a blazer or our tie really has a lot to do with the outcome of the game. <laughs> <laughs> you may not think so. I know you've experienced that too. But you got to be careful with the tie choice. And so it goes in Morrow's hands, and he gets it up to start the second half to the Saskatchewan 30 and a shorter kickoff again by the Stampeders. A good pass defense by both defenses, but the run game, you know, they, they get, got Jamal Morrow going early and often in this one. He had close to 100 yards rushing in the first half. 12 carries for 87, his longest at 22 yarder. Did a real good job in protection too when he was asked. So the, the running back sort of center stage in this one. Every, every game is a different journey. Harrison takes the handoff, he throws off to the right. That's Kendall Watson in his CFL debut at one touch in the first half for no game. And this time picks up a first down and a gain of 15. This is kind of what Jake Mayer said about young guys. You know, young players, Kendall Watson getting a chance, a rookie out of Samford who gets a chance to get in the lineup because of the injuries and got some speed over. Well, it's intercepted by Cameron Judge. It was deflected by Julian Hauser at the line. And an easy pick coming in for Judge after the work by Hauser on Trevor Harris. So we got a big turnover to start the second half for Calgary up near their 50.
Coming off the edge, the offensive line's going to slide protect to their left, and so that leaves an open lane for Hauser. But instead of sliding down with them, concerned with the run, he stays true and stays in contain. Now he's in the throwing lane. He gets up and gets the knockdown. Second interception of the season for Cameron Judge and Julian Hauser over from Hamilton. His first year with the Stampeders with that play. Short game, Hedrick Mills on first down. Second and long coming up. Mills didn't have the, the yardage that Morrow had in the first half, but he was important. And a couple of those runs early for over 10. Say first possession. Yeah, yeah he had back to back 11 yard carries, and it looked like they were really going to establish him, but they, you're right, they did get away from that a bit later on. David Mills got the start against Ottawa last week after Kadeem Carey got injured here at McMahon in week one against BC. Second and nine at the Calgary 50 for Jake Mayer. The blitz is coming. He gets it away. Oh. It's intercepted, and it's still in the hands of Roland Milligan. He dropped it, he picked it up, and he takes it all the way down to the one. Oh. Not calling it a touchdown. There was a hesitation where he went down. What a play <laughs> by Roland Milligan. The ball has been bouncing everywhere tonight. It's been all over the place. Remember that fumble early on that five stamps had a crack at it and didn't grab it? I mean, this one, okay, first of all, it's just outside. So Milligan chasing across the field. It drops right in his hands. Then he dropped it and caught it on the bounce, which almost never happens because of the shape of the football. And then away he goes. Tucker almost gets there. Now, is he down or did he cross the plane? Well, that was the, what they were looking at. They didn't call it a touchdown yet. They look at it here, knee down, and is the ball broken the plane? So I'm sure they're going to be taking another look at that before this point after. But it is a touchdown. Roland Milligan. His second interception of the season. After automatic review, this review by the command center, the runner was deemed down at the one-yard line. To be Saskatchewan, first down. Okay, they had called it a touchdown, and now they've... They have reversed it. So we'll call it a 56-yard return now as the Saskatchewan offense will have to come out. Well, turnovers are automatically reviewed and so are scores. So the command center, we're going to look at that. And, you know, from the replay, it did look like his knee touched before the ball crossed the plane. But I, I'm just, I'm marveling at the fact that that bounce, when he dropped it after the interception and caught the bounce right back up to him. Moncrief off the edge forces the inaccurate throw. And here comes the drop, and he picks it up. Shea Patterson in short yardage. One play later, it is a Saskatchewan Rough Rider touchdown. Patterson will go down in the books as the one who scored that TD. Milligan did that leg work after the pick, bobbling the ball, picking it up, taking it just about all the way. Well, the command center takes one away from a DB who doesn't often get it in the end zone, but, and that's probably why there's not more of a celebration from Roland Milligan on the bench over there, but he was, uh, boy, he got that bounce on the run. And just kept going. And the point after. No, no. Make it. Wave it off right for Brett Lawther. So they do get their six. And they take the lead by three. Roland Milligan dropped it, gets it, and takes it just about all the way. Okay, a lot going on here. There's Larry Dean. He's going to come on the blitz, and so is Moncrief off the edge. This is the receiver right here. That was the intended target, and it looked like Jake Mayer was going to the right guy because the middle linebacker vacates. There's Malik Henry. He is open, but the pressure from Moncrief forces the inaccurate throw. Milligan picks it off because it's a little bit behind and, a, and a over Malik Henry, and away he goes, but that one hopper right back to him. Wow. And so Saskatchewan leads by three. Drop ball by Logan in this kick return. Henderson who nearly had a big play that was overturned in the first half. A flag comes out.
during the return, holding Calgary number 48. Ten yard penalty, first down. This is why I say it's it's almost wrong at times to, to say helmet to helmet is always a penalty because helmet contact will happen all quite often. I mean it's it's part of the process, but as long as you don't lead with it, you're good. That was a clean hit and a big one. And the illegal block for the hold called on Jordan Herdman Reed inserted into the Calgary lineup, an X-Rider. So Diedrich Mills again. Grinding crew with Larry Dean there. And Micah Tights, the weak side linebacker, too, taking him down. Two good linebacking cores here. You think of Micah Tights, Larry Dean, and then and then the addition of Derek Moncrief back in that group. And then, you know, for Calgary, Micah Alway leads the league in tackles coming into this game in this week. Cameron Judge, all-star linebacker as well. So good defenses and good, and good backers for both these teams. Early second half. Riders, they've been trailing. On that touchdown, they take the lead, 9-6. Mayer with the heat coming, and Moncrief in the coverage there on Mills. So a completed pass, but not enough for a first down, and the Rider defense holds here as they'll have to punt it away deep. That's what I mean about the matchup. When you get a guy like Derek Moncrief, and he, you know, Jake Mayer thinks that Mills is open because he's got about four yards of separation, and he thinks that Moncrief is a linebacker, so he's not going to close that quickly. But because he's so athletic, he can close that space in a heartbeat. Close it down quickly. Fifth, two and out for Calgary's offense in this game. Cody Grace standing at his five. Mario Alford standing at his 40. Kicking it off to the left. 54 yarder. Alford. And nowhere to go. The wall of red coming down on him. Saskatchewan ball as Harris is back out with a three point lead. To McMahon Stadium tonight is Pure Later Tackle Hunger Night here in Calgary. Since 2003, Pure Later, along with the CFL and its member clubs and Canadians like you, have helped the Tackle Hunger program donate close to 20 million pounds of food to local food banks. The need is greater now than ever. You can go to purelatertacklehunger.ca to donate. And here's a full list of the games that you can check out this season for the Pure Later Tackle Hunger. Back to you guys. Thank you, Brett. When we see that initiative, we can only think of one person in particular. As the Riders have the ball, and Jamal Morrow nowhere to go. And that one, one person, of course, our, yeah. our late colleague Chris Schultz, who remember all those years, the big man just, he loved being a part of that. And getting all that food gathered together in the Pure Later Initiative. Uh, tackle yeah. Hunger, Schultz, he was involved for many, many years. Yeah, late Chris Schultz, and he, and, and loved being part of that. Absolutely. I mean, it was sincere. He he loved it, and over, tw what is it, 20 million pounds of food donated. He was, he was very proud of that. He passed away a couple of years ago. We miss you, Schultz. Deep ball. Harris. Oh, nearly caught by Winicky, who is hit just as it came in. Perfectly timed by the Stampeders. You know, Winnicky has been a bit of a puzzle. I mean, you know, a good athlete and, and guy who has chemistry with Trevor Harris, going back to their Montreal days. And both, you know, mutual respect is outstanding. They're great friends. They have the chemistry. I mean, you can't throw it any better than, than Harris threw it. But it's been a bit of a, a, bit of a slow start for Winnicky this season as a rider and he's limping off which isn't a good sign and another play by Kobe Williams Kobe Williams there in the coverage Dozier coming in after the ball had sailed through and Winicky slow heading off so the fifth two and out for Saskatchewan's offense and the punt by Corsak a 53 yard punt and 
Seth Logan gets it up to the Calgary 21. You know, Rod, that I, I often like to just say thank you to the men and women in the Canadian Forces, the men and women in law, in law enforcement in our country, and the first responders that are, are running in when everyone is running out of a, of a disaster situation. I want to say a special hello to Evan Bray, who is the Chief of Police in Saskatchewan, and he retires after 25 years of service. A great friend and, a, and a, just a great police chief for this in, in Regina. Happy retirement. The big parties tonight. Happy retirement. And thank you to all the first responders, police officers, and men and women in the Canadian Forces. Stampeders with the ball, trailing by three. That's Molly Henry with it. And a first down up across the 35. You know, Malik Henry wanted to get right back in there and get get that chemistry going again between him and Mayer because of that interception in the last series from Roland Milligan. Get him started, get that first one, high percentage throws. Now make note, suits Tommy Stevens, the backup quarterback, nice. is in this game. Off the fake and takes it up to the 40. That's a good note because I was looking right down at my chart thinking, okay, they're getting that going and it's Tommy Stevens. Now they're going to rotate back out. We saw Stevens run a play on first and 10 in the first half. We also saw Stevens yeah. have the longest run from scrimmage in the CFL last year against Saskatchewan right here at McMahon Stadium. That was late in the season. Not just about short yardage. Here's Mayer. Off to his right. And he completes the Mills. And another first down. Calgary on the move. Good throw to the outside. And, and I like what Mills did as soon as he caught it. I mean, he, he catches the ball and, and he freezes the defender that's trying to chase after him and try and go over there and hit him short. Because when he catches this ball, it's a great throw. Nice tight spiral from Jake Mayer. Gets it out there. Now watch him just stutter a step right there and freeze the defender. And that gives him the extra four to get the first down. I mean, the, any, any defender in that situation has to pause. He has to wait to see which direction the running back's going to go. Calgary up near midfield now. Away quickly. It is caught. And that is Cole Tucker, and I believe his first CFL catch. It is for the rookie activated for this game. Well, when you look at the passing numbers after the first half, and they were not spectacular, let's just put it that way, a lot of reason for that is young receivers. And, you know, they've, they've got to find their way. And we heard Jake Mayer talk to the fans about how it's, you know, he, he takes it upon himself to try and help them and, and give them what they need to run with confidence and just cut it loose. But, you know, both these teams, very similar. You know, they're one and one after two weeks. Playing against each other with banged up receiving cores and some young guys getting an opportunity to play. And an injury up front on the O-line. Bryce Bell moves to right tackle as Caleb Beninock was injured and taken off the field. So both teams have had to deal with an injury up front. spot Henry did the rest Calgary has the lead again smooth smooth run and what a move in the open field by Malik Henry first of all Jake Mayer is gonna gonna drift away from this throw he just he puts it right on him and he does not break stride he just sort of drifts away and look at that move cut back to the inside on CJ Revis and goodbye Part, but yeah. yeah, he's a receiver's coach. Malik Henry from Jake Bear. A lot after.
after the catch into the end zone. With the point after, up by four. Smooth mo route running here from Malik Henry, and he's working on Nick Marshall. Nick Marshall is in a man-to-man -man situation, playing at the line of scrimmage. Now watch Marshall. This time he cuts underneath. We know that at times Nick Marshall will take a chance for that interception. Cut underneath the upfield shoulder, and this time Malik Henry makes him pay. And what a move in the open field on C.J. Revis. He had to slam on the brakes and couldn't redirect. Gets him up to three catches for 87 yards and a touchdown. He had over 100 yards receiving last week in Ottawa. Alford, Alford on slips as he just before the goes down right at the Saskatchewan 29. So the Riders had trailed earlier, and now they trail again. Watch that move one more time. I mean, he catches the slant going one way, and then watch how he... Now he takes that little outside fake, plants that left foot, and look at Rivas just try to slam the brakes on a redirect, and, and just basically you can't you can't get there. Too much room, too much, much space. The top receiver a year ago in his third year to West Georgia, five plays, 89 yards, much of it on that one play for the touchdown. Riders down four. Trevor Harris in his pot. Devin Jones approaching about the 34. Call it a gain of six. A remarkable 11 of 19 for Trevor Harris, but under 100 yards passing in almost three quarters after coming off a 400-yard game. Yeah, although they have made quite a commitment in the first half to the run. They, just, they didn't have the points to show for it after some good drives. Exactly. 11 in the first half. 11-play drive, went 93 yards, got a field goal out of that. 11-play drive that only went 26 yards, but because of some penalties that pushed it back, missed a field goal there, and then I had a 40-yard drive and got zero points out of that. Good to see Winicky back on the field. He limped off after that last attempt. And with that, they get a first down after 45. They need more to show for their ability to move the ball. Bang. Next down. Facing his old team for the first time, and a flag does come out as he gets close to first down yardage for Saskatchewan. Let's see what this flag is. Major foul, blindside block. Saskatchewan number 19. 15-yard penalty. Repeat first down. Yeah, you can't do this one. This this is Sam Emelis. You see Bain coming out here, Moxie chasing him, and Emelis coming downhill. You can't come back towards your own line of scrimmage and blindside block a defender. Moxie trying to make the tackle, and there's a hit. And that is a player safety change that was made years back. So instead of being close to another first down at midfield, the Riders are pushed back. You know, a first and 25. And that's exactly why the rule was changed years ago, because it's a dangerous play. Moxie's still trying to shake that hit off. used to be part of the game and in fact you used to look to teammates to call those crackback blocks but I think it's the right thing to do to take it out of the game good for the player's safety and and that Moxie was behind anyway I mean he was behind the play it didn't look like So you see Tay Daly is in now at field half. Kobe Williams moving over to boundary half with Moxie off on this play in the first and 25. Play fake. Harris, good time. Can't find anybody he takes off. Doesn't do it often. Gets up close to the 40. It's still a long way to go for the Riders on this second down. You know, I've said many times that 
points establishing the run and then go and play action off the run uh, uh, to me is is the best attack and approach because defensively you're never sure but when you're first and 25 that's yeah, a bit different <laughs> yeah. first and 25 second and 25 play action fake doesn't mean anything <laughs> If a defender bites on a play action fake on first or second and 25, yeah, not good. Second and 16. What are they dialed up now? Shorter pass to Morrow. Good tackling after it. That's Darius Williams. In on Calgary's defense there to make sure he goes no further. And Saskatchewan's got a long third down. Yeah, basically you can play three-man pressure, drop everybody underneath. They can make Trevor Harris throw it there and then come up and make the tackle. And that was a good one from Williams. The stamps on defense have tackled well tonight. And an important point for the Riders. They had a missed extra point earlier, and that gets it back. It's now a three point lead again for Calgary. Under three minutes to go until three quarter time for Jake Mayer. Starting at the 40. Down. Follows up here with five more yards. Yeah, I'm not surprised. And and you know, Dave Dickinson, as the offensive coordinator as well, is is moving Malik Henry around with those young receivers. That play he made for the touchdown, he was in the slot. And that play, he goes out for the hit screen, and now he's a wide receiver on the short side. So they're just mixing it up and changing things up. That Delmonico coaching the old line and assisting with, with Dave. Dave's got a lot of hats so they need an OC to help with Dave's game plan now this play dangerous play Nick Marshall was coming in and thinks he should have had it as Mayor released that into a crowd well this is a bit of the Nick Marshall world isn't it you know one time he'll cut underneath and and the offense will get him for it and the next time he's gonna he's gonna instinctually get to the football and knock it out of their interception he almost had an interception and, and he would just been in a foot race with an offensive lineman had he grabbed that And there goes the push-ups, yep. He's going to pay for it. Understood self-imposed fine for missing a chance at a pick here. Cody Grace well, takes a hop back. Alfred running in with the drama no yards, and he does. Big free agent acquisition for the Calgary Stampeders in the offseason. Julian Hauser had some great years as a member of the Hamilton Tiger Cats, predominantly sacks, but a couple of interceptions as well last season with more. Britt Dorn. Yeah, and Dave Dickinson was not shy about one of the players he was quote, pumped to pick up in free agency. He pointed right to Hauser. He told me maybe he's not a guy you notice on the field, but boy, when you watch him on film, does he pop. He said you'll see all the coverage happening, and you'll look over to the side, and there's Julian Hauser following the play. And he said that's the biggest asset about him. It's he's the type of guy that always knows where the play is at and how to make the play. And it, you even saw it tonight, get that ball back. Brady takes great pride in being a versatile defensive end. He had his second interception last season here off Jake Mayer when Hamilton was here. Yeah, they can drop him, right? They can. He, he's athletic. He's a, kind of that Moncrief kind of guy. Versatility on the ground. Not 
not much there over the 45, a pickup of three. He's got a whole toolbox when it comes to pass rush. One of those guys that the motor never gets back into neutral. It's always full speed all the time. But again, that versatility you talk about, you can you can rush him off the edge, obviously good in the run game, but he can drop and get deep, like 15, 20 yards. That is just inside for Kendall Watson. A gain of 20. Watson getting the chance after an injury to Juwan Breskison. They've had problems with injured receivers, too. He gets his chance here. Real good accuracy with the pressure coming. The Calgary Stampeders sent everybody. Jamal Morrow picks up the A-gap blitz. That's right down the middle. And it allows Trevor to step up in the pocket and just put a nice little rainbow on that and drop it in there to Kendall Watson. They spotted at the 44. Here come the Riders. They trail by three. To be the final play of the third quarter for Harris. Taking the handoff and stepping up. Saskatchewan touchdown. Just amazing. And, and you know, the, the game inside the game is protections. And watch Morrow here on that last play where he dropped it to Kendall Watson. Morrow made a big block on the blitz. Now he's going to fake it and then get the chip on the outside so that Trevor Harris has a chance to step up in the pocket, climb in there, and hit Jones wide open on the crossing run on the shallow post. So Lother looking to make it a four-point rider lead, which he does. A flag does come out on that point after try. So we'll wait and see as there are zeros in the clock in three-quarter time, but what a way to end the quarter. I yeah, I know. Tevin Jones last week, I mean, Emelis was the headliner for the three touchdowns. Jones last week, he made three catches. He had nine on them for 121, including one that set up the first Emelis touchdown. After by the video official, there's no flag on the play. So they pick it up. And the Riders pick it up, too. They've led, they trailed, they lead again. Tevin Jones from Trevor Harris, wide open and in. The first half was low scoring, only nine points and a lot of running plays. But in this second half so far, that third quarter saw some big passing plays those two that led to touchdowns yeah Tevin Jones for Saskatchewan Malik Henry the 52 yarder on the great move on CJ Revis in the middle and all of a sudden the offenses have got going here and and that's that's good to see I mean every every game has a different sort of feel to it different journey and they established the run early that's why we had a low scoring game in the first half and then second half offenses are clicking in reasons for that is that both these quarterbacks go to the sideline look at the tablets right away and they make their adjustments on the fly good teams do that Jones with his first touchdown of the season 17 13 to start the fourth quarter riders Calgary gets the ball Logan oh he's trying to keep his feet too he does have a pretty good return Herdman Reed taking him down as he was tripped up and he appears to be hurt as well he gets it up across the Calgary 50. Logan still down. Just got tripped up. He makes himself skinny right, right behind the wedge. Gets skinny right in there. That's not a real big hole to run through, but he gets there and then trips up. I think he tripped up on his own guy. Oh, hold, hold in the back of his leg. Isaac had a yummy burglar. The one just the way that uh, Logan shot through and tripped a bit on him, and he is still down on the field. And one of many electric kick returners in the Canadian Football League that we've talked about, but hobbled here. 
and needs some help to get off. He grabbed the back of his knee. I'm not putting, not taking any chance, of putting any pressure on that. We have a, a medical tent now. To see that getting put into place so they can take a look without prying eyes. We've seen Long lay on kick return in this game and before, but for punt return, we've seen Clark Barnes early in the season, the rookie receiver, field some punts too. Should they need to make a change, that one is incomplete. Trey Odom's Dukes is at a quieter game compared to the first two of the season. Yeah, just just missed him. He's coming from the left of the screen, and, and C.J. Rivas, who is back in the game at free safety, of course, we saw him on that Malik Henry play, but he's back there, and he, he reacts to this one just a split second late because that throw behind... If you, if you miss a guy over the middle, there's usually DBs in back there waiting for that opportunity. And the Stamps, in second and long again, are three for 12 in second down conversions. From their 50. And Mayer takes off. And he gets enough for a first down. Right down the rider, 50, just inside the 49. That's a heads-up move at the end of the play because Jake Mayer knows exactly where the, the sticks are. And instead of hook sliding, which would have kept him about a yard or maybe too short, he slides or, or gives himself up forward, diving to the marker. So another running first down for Calgary, courtesy Jake Mayer. His first carry in this game. Rider 49 throws it down in the turf in front of... Diedrich Mills, who has some words with Micah Tights after the whistle. This was a, this was a ground the ball deliberately by Jake Mayer to go second and ten, rather than try and put it to Mills, who was completely blanketed by Micah Tights. Another second and long. They did convert last time, thanks to the running of Mayer. Throws it, left side, completes it. Hakuna Manu inside the 40, down to the 35. Another first down, Calgary Stampeders, and a pickup of 14 for Hakuna Vanu. Luther Acunavano shades the road here real nice. We On our Zoom calls with quarterbacks, we often hear that term where when he's running his route, he wants to shave it off in front of the DB. Just go to your spot, or if you're running a curl or a post or a dig, something in the middle, you're going to come back and shave in front of the defensive back. And that's what Acunavano does here. Puts his foot in the ground, gets a couple extra yards after the catch. Trevor Harris talks about it all the time. He loves when his receivers will shave the road off come back and just cut under the DB. Meanwhile, we have an injured Stampeder still down on the field. It is Malik Henry, who had a big touchdown catch and run of 52 yards in the third quarter, but uh, also not a good sight as he needs help to get off to the sideline. He's out there at the wideout spot. To the right. Three, three and two. It, that was just a non-contact. Something happened when he when he took off. Reggie Bagleton had a great game last week when he got hurt, put on the sixth game, and yeah, that look says it all. Malik Henry, top two receivers for the Stamps coming into this season, and we we've talked a lot about how they're dressing rookies in this game because they're thin. That experience in the receiving core and the most experienced one there, Henry. Non-contact injury, it appears, as he's headed off now. So they're at the rider 35. Hakuna Vanu with the first down. Mayer steps up, tries to take off again, but he can't. Larry Dean comes in and makes sure of it. Does pick up a couple of yards. Another second and long coming up. Dave Dickinson in the Zoom with us this week was talking about those injuries and, and guys like Reggie Bagel did not in the lineup. And 
basically saying he's he's interested himself to see the young guys but also to see who steps up as a leader and now with Malik Henry off the field see who does that makes those big plays a problem an opportunity you could call it too for some young stampede receivers three to the right Off to the left and Odom's Dukes and a touchdown in the season opener here at McMahon against the BC Lions and another first down and a gain of 21 Calgary. You can tell it's a it's a Western matchup. You can tell it's a rivalry game in a lot of ways. You can tell and you know how you can tell that Trey Odom Stukes doesn't run out of bounds here. He, he goes down that sideline and Nick Marshall stepping up to make a tackle. He lowers the shoulder and takes on the contact. Most of the time you'll see a receiver run out of bounds there. Instead, a little bit more. Yeah. It's the West this, going head to head. It is. It is. And it's historically been a very good rivalry. You hear a lot about Riders Bombers. The green versus the red has been Saskatchewan 12. Calgary's there for Jake Bear. And just throws it away. Yep. Yeah, you Dave Dave just Dickinson just looks over to see his star receiver in Malik Henry. And there he's still in the tent and he's just thinking the card has backed up to help him to the locker room for further examination. So you mentioned it's opportunities for young guys to make their mark. Like right now, this is as deep as Calgary's gone. Exception the touchdown, but no, it's picked off instead. Intended for Adams Dukes. Larry Dean has it. Big turnover. Rough Riders as Dean takes it out. Up across the 25. Well, it's going to be reviewed, but I think that was live. It looked like it bounced off a leg. Stayed live, didn't touch the ground. Here's a good look at it to the right corner of your screen. Ball dropped, hit the Kicked leg. Up. Yeah. And Dean scoops it. Wow. The ball has been bouncing everywhere tonight. Has it ever? We saw some in the first half. That's crazy. Kicked up by CJ Revis. What an assist to Larry Dean. Well, I'm pretty sure that CJ Revis didn't try to do this on purpose. <laughs> he was going down, and the chances of it hitting his leg. Bouncing up in the air long enough for Larry Dean to get there and make sure he grabs it before it touches the turf. Just remarkable what's going on with the football tonight. CJ Rivas going to be good do that again if he tried. Remarkable. As Harris throws it off and the flag does come out. The intended receiver is Winicky. The coverage by Kobe Williams. And that flag is out of the stamp secondary. And that is just yep. an awful sight for Illegal the Illegal contact. Calgary number zero. Ten yard penalty. Result in a first down. Williams penalized, but Malik Henry had a great touchdown in the third quarter and had another receiver going down for Dave Dickinson. So, like you talked about, there's there's opportunity here for some young receivers of the Calgary Stampeders right now. They need them. So with the penalty, it's up now to the Saskatchewan 43. The Riders lead it by four. Calgary had been pressing a throw down near the end zone, and it's a deflected, an assisted interception by Larry Dean. So Calgary couldn't get any more points. And here come the Riders now. Sean Bain breaks free. Lost more. Bain! Can they catch him? Finally do. Cameron Judge down there with Williams. But we got a first and goal coming up for Craig Dickinson, Saskatchewan Rough Riders. A gain of 60 yards for the ex Peter. Sean Bain. Key to the success of this play and the success of a play like this is to get the ball in the receiver's hands early. He just shoots through the formation and then catches it on the other side. And it gives him time to turn up field. 
And Bain does the rest from there. Again, some great moves in the old field. Watch the, the cutback. He gets up on Dozier. And then a cutback here on the inside. He's got a nice block from Sam Emelis downfield. And they're knocking on the door. Down to the Calgary 7. Harris hands off. Moore goes back to break it around. Gets close to the end zone. Down to the 1. And Jamal Morrow sets up a short second and goal after a six-yard carry. Well, Kobe Williams got their defense another chance, and they played this almost as well as they could have by, by stringing it out. Watch how they string out Morrow here, get him pushing to the sideline, running towards the sideline, but he turns his shoulders and gets it down to the one all on his own. With that carry, he has an even 100 yards rushing. As mentioned last week against Winnipeg, Morrow only had 20 yards. Shane Patterson in. To punch it in again. His second rushing touchdown. Saskatchewan adds to their lead. And points off turnovers. The last time it was Patterson finishing it off with a roll and Milligan pick. This one started with a Larry Dean interception. Yeah, good push right over the middle. Patterson away in the USFL last year had been with the Alouettes along with Trevor Harris in 2021. Back in the CFL in that short yardage roll. Going for two to see if they can increase the lead to 12. Well, it's short and the ball comes out. Dozier picks it up. But no, they don't have the two. The thinking being you get that magic 11 of a touchdown and a two point convert plus a field goal, and they could have got outside that. Had they got the two-point convert, pushed it ahead to 12. But instead, it stays still a two-score game and a 10-point lead. The biggest lead we've seen in this one. Defense has certainly helped. But it's a touchdown, Patterson. And now we present our Coors Light moment of chill. Breathe deep, chill, then go on and throw a touchdown pass. Tevin Jones, Trevor Harris, our Coors Light moment of chill, a moment of focus before the game. I like that. Four <laughs> plays, 83 yards. I try that. There you go. <laughs> you work on that now. And we see Clark Barnes back for the kick return with the injury to Peyton Logan, the rookie out of Guelph. Great kick returner in his college days with Guelph. His first two games took the opening kickoff for touchdowns and had one a little later in his third game. So he's used to being in this situation and now getting that spotlight yeah, on the Canadian football. Real good return and, and one that's important to give Jake Mayer a, a nice way to start the series and a good position to start the series on the field. That's a great cut back. He got an extra 15 on that cut. Now Jake Mayer's got a chance. This is a game with lots of time left. Just down by two, two possessions. It's opened up, certainly, after only nine points were scored in the first half. Now 23-13, Calgary down. And that is caught by Cole, or Odom's Dukes, excuse me. He's Trey Odom's Dukes, who's but the most experienced receiver just about in Calgary right now in his second year at South Florida in a gain of nine. Working tempo halfway through the fourth quarter. Second and one. And Mayer it stayed in, not Tommy Stevens. Yeah, plenty of time left as as you all know watching Canadian football that seven minutes you can double your score both teams 
<laughs> they drove well last time. Throw into the end zone, got picked off. Three man rush. Dumps it off. Finds a receiver, too. It's Cole Tucker. One of those rookies taking it inside the 35 at a big first down, Calgary. Well, this is important not just for tonight and this game and coming back, but it's important in the long run for this team. Get these young receivers comfortable. Gain of 18 yards for Cole Tucker in his CFL debut. And Roland Milligan is down. Good eyes up there from Jake Mayer, just climbing up in the pocket, but keeping his eyes downfield. Milligan, who had that big interception in the third quarter, leading to the Riders' first touchdown. And getting some attention on a Calgary drive midway through the final quarter, Saskatchewan leads registration there is a rule for you you can join the movement today visit specialolympics.ca slash calling all volunteers big days for Canada so far in the pool and on the track a couple of gold medals the Special Olympics first and ten Calgary the rider 32 mayor throws a nice catch there by Luther Hakuna Vanu to extend this drive first down Stampeders when he arrived on the scene, I think they were in BC. It was either game one or two for Acunavano, and he had a huge touchdown right down the middle. It might be harder against BC's defense this year. <laughs> the way they're Time playing. Out. Saskatchewan. That's a great catch, though, by Acunavano coming back. Again, this is great experience for these guys to get this where where not only are they starters but now they're starters that have to be relied on and he he comes back and squeezes that keeps it up off the turf protects it that's a confidence confidence building catch for Akunavanu coming right back to the ball very nice who's going to step up well Akunavanu in his third year at a York and he had a couple of catches before this game coming in. He is three now for 58 yards. Down to the rider 19. That was a couple of years ago he was in that BC game. Okay. Mills inside the five. First and goal, Calvary. 15 yard gain, Diedrich Mills. That's what Britt talked about when they, she talked early in the game about. Diedrich Mills and how he approaches the game every single snap like it's his last and has that energy and enthusiasm and speed and urgency. Saw it. Back in his hands inside the five. That time tangled down CJ Rebus. The down near the goal line last time around had the remarkable kick in coverage. Kicked the ball up to Larry Dean. And that led to the rider drive that increased their lead. And Micah Tights now. A couple down. of cramps late in this game, Rod. That looks like that's what that might be as well, although they're checking out his knee. Jason Shivers going head to head. Now he's got to get his goal line defense in there, which go back to the first game of the regular season against Edmonton. They had the big goal line stand. Micah Johnson will be a big part of that. A.J. Allen coming in. And Pat Delmonico, who, you know, I, I, I called Dave Dickinson earlier on the, the O.C. Dave is part of the game planning, obviously, and, and in-game will be on the headset listening in, but the guy calling the plays is either Delmonico or, or uh, Larry Mueller. Uh, excuse me, Mark Mueller. Larry's son. And so, you know, because Dave has become the GM as well. Got a lot of hats on. <laughs> But since you mentioned Mark Mueller and they are playing Saskatchewan, it's a story I'm sure people have heard many times to remind those who may not know. Oh, yeah. His grandpa, one of the legends in CFL history. There's Mark. 
grandfather Ron Lancaster. So Mark will talk to directly to Jake Mayer and he'll be the guy who signals it in and, and is looking at his chart. Delmonico will be communicating with him. Dave Dickinson is also right there and ready. You see him talking and can also communicate to both. So a lot of offensive power I guess in those three minds helping Jake Mayer. At a critical moment right now too for the Stampeders who are down 10 and they have an opportunity and a need to find the end zone again. Second and goal at the Saskatchewan three. Seventh play of this drive. Mills in the backfield. They fake it. Mayer keeps it. And he scores the Calgary touchdown. Had to have it. of brain trust for the Calgary Stampeders come up with a play that gives Jake Mayer all kinds of options. He goes with the fake. He's rolling outside so he's got the option to run or throw. He's got three receivers that are trying to work back towards him. If any one of them opens up he can get rid of the ball and throw it. And instead he takes it. He sees the opening and goes and scores. Second rushing touchdown of this young season for Jake Mayer. Paredes gets the point after. And it's back to a three-point game with just under five minutes to go in the fourth. Take a look at Jake Mayer. Give, give your quarterback four yards from the end zone a lot of options. So he, he pulls the ball there because Cox comes down inside the defensive end. Gets outside. He sees that there's no contain there. Reeves is slow to the party. And then that's why he takes it and runs with it. But he had three receivers as options as well. So give your quarterback options and then let him make the right call when the play when the ball is snapped and then let quick six do the rest and then <laughs> quick six take a lap Cunavato with that big catch to keep the drive alive He's on second a down this absolutely this is we've asked that question what do they do at receiver now so well, maybe he's the guy and you know if if you're a young Canadian receiver and they've got a ton of them on the roster tonight Cunavato why not you why not you why not be the guy to step up and say hey you can trust me Jake throw it up my way I won't lay you down and he didn't on that last series and who knows how this is going to play out now with Calgary closing the lead Saskatchewan still on top but just by three they'll get the ball offered inside the five. Mario Alford got some room has to cut back and finally they do him swarm but he does get it out to about the 43 of Saskatchewan and a good place for Trevor Harris to start. Yeah remember Barnes Barnes had the return gives Jake Mayer a good confident place to start the drive. They finish with a touchdown. Same thing right there for Mario Alford. Give Trevor Harris close to midfield to start the drive to try and answer the Calgary touchdown. 445 and counting. Good close matchup. With this Western rivalry with the Riders and the Stampeders, both at one and one. One of them will tie Winnipeg for second in the West. Complete off to the left, up to the 47 for Jake Winnicky. So pick up a four yards give him five we'll call it this is where that chill deep breathing comes <laughs> for in for right yeah you get down to four minutes now three-point game you start deep breathing so does Kelly Jeffrey play calling over there on the sideline a lot of coordinators like to be upstairs Jeffrey down on the field moment of chill in a tense moment now in a second and five Harris oh Samuel Lemos with Jamerson jumping in front of the ball, Emelis hangs on to it. And a big rider first down. Great concentration from Sam Emelis working Timeout, against Calgary. Jamerson. And Trevor Harris gives him a chance. There's an up over top. Amerson waving at it. Just missed the knockdown. And tremendous concentration. 
How many times have you seen a receiver distracted by that hand? Not that time. And we've seen more of his receiving game than just those touchdowns he had last week against Winnipeg. You, you asked about what that would do for his confidence. Well, there's your example of what it can do. Three touchdowns and then the next game out. Big play. Get down the field into scoring Timer, range. can you please put three minutes, 40 seconds on the clock? Thank you. And keep your concentration with a DB right in the throwing lane, hand waving around in front of your face. Probably didn't even see the ball till it hit his hands. You could argue those three touchdowns last week were big, especially for his career, but that's a tougher catch. He just made there now. Yeah, exactly. Well, there was that one that he did. Which oh, one? he had another. He had the another great one, one too. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're, <laughs> they, we're starting to talk about him. Though, exactly. Which we're is, ranking, ranking big catches. Yeah, something yeah. that I don't think we would have expected to do at the start of the season. Morrow, left side, Jamal and Boyle. a good pickup as he gets nine more yards for the Riders and 109 in the game for Morrow on the ground. So we got a second and short coming up. James Waters gets caught here with the and just sort of underestimates the speed. He steps up and is in good position, but watch Morrow's speed get out and around him. Number nine will step up here. He's going to stay. Look at him trying to redirect, stay in containment, and just sort of mis misread the speed of Morrow on the outside. Micah all the way on the tackle for Calgary. Second and one. Oh, coming in. But what an effort after the contact by Morrow. Alway had him, and Morrow said, no, I'm going to push through for a first down. Alway is a hammer. I mean, he, he steps up in the middle of your screen. Middle linebacker, judge behind him. Look at him just scrape to the hole. He saw the blocking scheme up front. That's scraping. Mike Good effort by Morrow. It was. Hard hit and good effort after by Morrow. This drive continues a first down Saskatchewan. The last time Trevor Harris started a game here was the last time he faced Calgary. He was with the Edmonton Elks on Labor Day suits and he had a big day. Well, he had to earn it to get that win. That was win number one ever against Calgary. Yeah, too. 31 of 41 for almost 400. And you know just the four TDs he, you, you had to earn it here and he'd heard he'd been tired of hearing how he'd never beaten Calgary he was 0 10 and 2 until that day on Labor Day 21 and they did win it finally for Harris trying to hang on here and lead the Riders to victory at the on the ground they go under three minutes they've issued the warning for that Jamal Morrow who's had quite a day especially running the football 2.30 on the clock and a gain of about six yards second and four coming up yeah 100 yards coming in in two games over 100 in this game with three minutes to go two and a half minutes to go I would say this is the the moral the moral game and lots of options for Trevor Harris he's will play action he can run another run play They didn't think they used him nearly enough against Winnipeg last week, despite their success throwing the football. Timeout, Saskatchewan. So Saskatchewan takes the timeout on the second and four at the Calgary 23, trying to add to that three-point lead. Yeah, cl clearly, I, I think when Trevor Harris looked, he, he just before he took the snap, he, di he didn't like what he saw formation-wise. It almost like it, the play didn't match the formation. Timer, can we please put the clock at 2.11? You know, and, and, and right now, I mean, you, you don't want a mistake in plus territory when even a field goal makes a big difference. Right. A touchdown. Well, never say never in the CFL, but a touchdown and look awfully good for the green and white right now with just over two minutes to go. Who gets bragging rights early oh. in this season between the two brothers? Yeah, and, and the overall series, Craig may be down, but we're going to hang on and win this one. And both of them would feel that way. It's the last one that matters the most, the most recent one. Here's Morrow on the second and four. Breaks free. First down, Saskatchewan, and a great second effort by Jamal Moore when it looked like the Stampeders had had him. Yeah, they did. They had him 
just corralled. I mean, it looked like pitcher perfect defense all the way on the right side. Calgary. He's got contain, a linebacker that can scrape, but the patience working outside and breaking that tackle, which would have been a three or four yard loss. And then getting the corner and getting out right here. Mike Alway, one of the big hitters and tacklers in the game, just can't hang on. That's great lower body strength for Jamal Morrow. Who's really running with determination in this game. Ends up with five yards, gets it to the 18, up to 122 in this game. And we get a first down Saskatchewan, killing time as well. They're at the... Calgary 18 yard again Mike Alway opportunity missed for the great middle linebacker the stamps impressive numbers more 203 in the clock back in his hands too driving for more and still driving he's not going down easily today as he picks up five more yards well, we've seen some great performances from young receivers and different players some Great defense, too, from Kobe Williams tonight. But that's been the best player on the field for both teams, Jamal Morrow. I don't think there's any question about that. Helping sustain this drive right now. Seventh play coming up. And talking about it before, remember the year that he was having. Brett Monson, the defensive coordinator for Calgary. I, I wouldn't be surprised. He loads and tries to cancel all the gaps up front and make Trevor Harris throw it. Second and five. Morrow again. They keep going to him. And he keeps delivering. He gets close to another first down inside the 10. Well, he's close. Now let's see how close because it's decision time for older brother. But another spectacular. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be a 50-yard run to be spectacular. It can be five. But just spinning, taking hits, quick feet. Yard to go. Cards on the table. There you go. <laughs> exactly. Here we go. Third and one. No field goal. They either continue the drive or Calgary takes over. Patterson. And he pushes forward again. It looked like there was a chance for the Stampeders to halt him. Someone but from the Stamps made contact behind the line and I don't know if Shea Patterson's second effort got him there. They're lining it up now. Always trying to do his part to influence the decision, but the ball's already been spotted. And they're going to bring the sticks in. Wow, that's how close it is. A close spot. And what a, what a big spot this is now. 112 in the clock. Turnover on downs here. center was helping with that spot. after review by the command center the spot was moved to the nine yard line ball is short of the first down first down Calgary who got contact I think it was Mike Alway who got contact on Patterson first well it's almost impossible to spot the forward progress of the ball there there's again, the, there it is all way but and Jordan Hurtman Reed had come in over the top as well and that's where they spot it so Calgary's not done yet 112 they take over on downs still a three-point game three man rush from there they still get heat on him as he gets rid of it nearly ended there by Nick Marshall. He had a chance for another pick. And that would have done it, but 
slipped through his fingers. A high throw from Jake Mayer. Second down. They're eight for 18 and second down conversions. Barely a minute to go here at McMahon. From the end zone, stepping up. Gets rid of it. Completes it too. Cole Tucker has it. Smart for Cole Tucker to catch it, feel the, the pressure around him, and go down immediately. Stops the clock. Jake Mayer can get up, and they're going to be tempo, of course, or basically hurry up here in the final minute. Gain of 18 for Tucker in his CFL debut to the Calgary 27. In tempo. Over at Kirkland. There. Over the middle. For Tucker again. No, Odom's Dukes, excuse me. Trey Odom's Dukes with a catch and another Calgary first down. Yeah, I thought it was incomplete for a second there because something flew to the ground. It must have been a mouthpiece or something, but that was a deep throw, confident throw by Mayer over the middle. That's back-to-back 18-yard -back passing plays up to the Calgary 45. Needing to get in field goal range for Perez. Pressure was coming. Mayer got rid of it, and he completes it too. My goodness. And that's Tucker with it. His second catch on this drive. And it continues, and they get closer to field goal range. Mayer pays the price for this one, but he'll take it. That's a great throw under pressure. He gets hit hard and still delivers a strike. One play away from field goal range. Need about eight, ten yards. Robertson bearing down, and we ask that question again. An opportunity for some young receivers. Who's going to step up? Tucker with a couple of big ones. Mayer shaking up there. You see Trey Odom's Dukes on that on that deep dig route. Comes in the middle, digs over, runs the dig over top. The mouthpiece comes flying. That's, I thought that was the ball for a second, but it wasn't. And he made that catch. Now a play away, but Jake Mayer has come off. With, it looked like he was favoring his shoulder. At this point, it would take a 57-yard try by Pareto to tie the game. Got to get a bit closer. Tucker. They do get a little bit closer. A few more yards. 30 seconds. On the clock is Paredes in his 12th season, warms up on the sidelines. This guy, this guy could take off and run, too. You know that. Second and seven. Time winding down. Tommy Stevens in for the intended loss. And he gets it. Run out of bounds is Stevens. Picks up a yard. Paredes is coming on. With the ball at the 46. Looking about it, a 53-yard try coming up. Ten-year veteran Micah Johnson. Tremendous hustle to get Stevens out of bounds, or he might have taken another four, five, maybe ten more yards on that run around the edge. Taking a little bit of pressure off Paredes, but... As the Kunavanu takes a knee. Now, this is interesting. Rene Paredes, one of the greatest in the history of the CFL, especially for accuracy, of course, not as much for distance. His career high is 53. And this is what it would take to tie this game and force overtime. He is two for two tonight, and he has the wind at his back. Should point that out as well. Balls have been sailing farther in that direction right to left in your screen 53 yard try 17 seconds on the clock and I think the riders just moments ago were all so close to putting this one away Cody Grace to put it down Paredes to tie the game and he got it he does it matching his career high and another clutch kick from a clutch kicker we have a 23 23 tie with 11 seconds to go 
And the pressure that is on a kicker at that moment, you just, it's its something you can't measure. It's something, it's, it's hard to put any statistical sort of explanation to it except for accuracy under those circumstances. And he's one of the best in the business at it, and he nails it to tie this game. He's seen a lot from his kicker over the years. And his counterpart, his big brother Craig, not yet. This game is not over yet. There's still more work to be done. Rene Perret is the last two off seasons. Glenn has talked about retiring and then decided to come back. He, he's a firefighter now. So they work around his schedule on his other job for practice. And for someone like that, they're willing to accommodate him, of course. And there's a bit of a payoff, isn't it? Well, and think back to the Micah Awe with a yard to go. And not kicking a field goal there, going on third and one, Saskatchewan. They stop him on defense. Jake Mayer makes four or five plays, and they're tied. Jamal Mora back to return the kick. Seven seconds on the clock. He goes down with four seconds to go in regulation, looking very much, barring a big play from Trevor Harris coming up here. Uh, Looks like overtime is looming between the Riders and the Stampeders. Well, there's a couple of questions here. First of all, what's the health situation of starting quarterback Jake Mayer for Calgary? If we do go to overtime, they're going to take a knee and take it to overtime. The way the ball has been bouncing tonight, I think that's a safe decision and a good one. The Riders, not long ago, had led by 10. Calgary came back. Perez made sure of it from 53 yards. Off to OG we go. A reminder of the rules for CFL overtime. Teams play a maximum of two mini games. Each team will scrimmage from the opponent's 35 to try to score. After a touchdown, they have to go for two. The team who scored the most points in the mini games earns two points in the standings. And each team gets one point if still tied. So now the coin toss for overtime. The team logo is tails. CFL logo is heads. Your call? Tails. The call is tails. It is a tail. You want to start on defense? What would, and would you like to play it? Do you want to play in this? Or you want? Okay, so we'll go that. We'll go this end. So Calgary football to start. It looks like Jake Mayer is going to be okay. That's good news for Calgary fans. And interesting that two kickers are making the decision yeah. on the coin toss. And it just may be the kickers that win this one or don't and that is the pressure that's on them and unlike really any other player to be honest and how many times have we seen well, we've seen it in the gray cup where one team gets points and then the next team's on and there's a turnover an interception and suddenly it's open they each get one possession in each mini game First possession, Calgary. Tommy Stevens, in the quarterback, just calls his number, advances the ball. We did see Jake Mayer get injured earlier. So I guess Mayer's Jake. Coming in. Yeah, I guess Jake Mayer. Well, he's coming in now. He looked like he was fine, but they start out with a quarterback draw, called play, just fake it to that fly sweep, and then right through that hole in the B gap between guard and tackle, and then just lowers the shoulder, lowers the pad level on Milligan. So Mayer is actually off again. Stevens again. Short yardage. The first play they actually Mayer was on the field and then ran off and so again a six more for Stevens so here we see Mayer now Stevens running on those two plays to pick up the first down boy those were aggressive quarterback runs 
It's a down to the 20, and of course, in overtime, you don't have to worry about a clock. It's a matter of what they get at this stage. At least three, thinking, trying to get into the end zone, or as mentioned, they'd have to go for two. From the 20. On the ground again, Mills. Riders bottling him up after a gain of four more yards and a passing down likely coming up here for Calgary. Yeah, we'll see how that injury or how banged up Jake Mayer is. He's he's gotten it out. Not not showing any signs of it. But we'll see now because this is a throwing down. Although with the way that Mills has played, you could swing it out to him. Doesn't have to be a deep throw and let him do the heavy lifting. Chipping their way down after starting at the 35. They're at the Saskatchewan 16. First possession of overtime. Mayor to throw. And it's a little low intended for Odom's Dukes. A little short, falls incomplete. And a third down is coming up. And that's why if you win the toss in overtime, you, you go second. In other words, you go offense second. Because now the riders know, you see that one just short to Odom Dukes. And Paredes is out, but Dave Dickinson is challenging for roughing the passer. Well, you don't want to finish this game and have the challenge flag in your pocket, so. Calgary is challenging for roughing the passer. Ball out. Well, uh, a little tap there by Lanier, yeah, and yeah, Nair's calling for it. He did make contact. But yeah, I, I, mean, it, yeah, I think that was just a... Uh, Well, I'll, I'll let them decide, but at the end of the day, like I said, you don't want to be at the end of this game with the challenge flag not used. Chance to get a new set of downs. Mayor signaled, so his coach thought, okay, maybe there was something I didn't see. But I, I just, there's no there's no way that could be rough in the pass. Or hard, to, hard to imagine they would call that. No. After review, the ruling on the field stands. Announced by I, the referee Tom Valesi. I, I would love, I would love to just one time see a ref come out and go, "Good try." <laughs> 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 he had the challenge. Dave Dickinson had the challenge flag, and he used it. So Rene Paredes, who made this overtime possible thanks to a 53-yarder, has a lot less than that to give Calgary the lead by three in OT, and he does. 26-23, but now Saskatchewan will scrimmage 35 yards away from Calgary's end zone. Now, if they, if they tie this up with a field goal, we go to the other end and do it again. But if Calgary scores on defense or interception or game over, well, that's it. These things can end very quickly. The quickest on one single play here now, either a touchdown or a turnover. Trevor Harris is close to getting it in regulation, looking for his second win ever against the Stampeders. We mentioned the last time he was with Edmonton on Labor Day Monday. 2021. Well, this this game has been all about Jamal Morrow. A couple plays by Sean Bain coming out of the backfield as well on those little fly sweep swing passes. He's over here. Riders down a field goal. First possession over time. Play fake. Oh, in that crowd. Man. In that crowd. And Emelis couldn't hang on to that down at the 20. And he's slow to get out. And so is Brandon Dozier. Yeah, that's just... Everybody's got to regroup after that one. There, there, that was a three-way just... Oh. Dozier coming downhill. Leads with his shoulder. Turns. That's all, all that was clean, but... Just... 
So Dozier and Emelis definitely have to come off the field. Spotters, medical spotters would not let them continue, although the training staffs do that too, but. Anyone else out there is looking a little off. They'll be pulled as well. One more time on the hit. Fierce collision. Dozier goes off on his own. Uh, they look okay. Does. They look okay. They, they look okay now, but sitting this play out. And big second and ten. Three plays because training staffs came out, so they, they're out for three. So out for three. Second and ten. Stamps rush three. Handing it off. Now it's Bain. Cuts it back. And he gets down to the 35 only. So looks like Lother will be coming out to end this first mini game, hoping to tie it up again. Yeah, it's been one of those games, right, where it's either Morrow between the tackles or it's Bain trying to get him outside and around. It's been that little swing pass to him or else that, a fly sweep coming all the way from right to left. And gets Lowther a little closer. This will be further than what Paredes had, but a 38-yarder to be put down by Corsak to tie it up and force a second mini game. Perfect. Game two. It keeps going. Lothers good. We're tied at 26. And the Riders will start the second mini game with their offense still on the field. They'll go first. And now advantage Dave Dickinson because now he can wait, see what the Riders can, or what his defense can hold the Riders to. And they switch in, so they'll go to the other 35 now for both teams. A good rule for the fans. So you play one of the overtime games at one side and the other at the other side. It's funny for Trevor Harris. In, in two of the games that he had started against Calgary, you notice he had 10 losses, the one win in Labor Day, and two ties against the Stampeders. Harris has been through this before, going to overtimes that could not be resolved. One amazing game back in 2017 against uh, when he was with Ottawa against the Stamps. That one ended tied at TD Place. Gain of 21 yards. Yeah, this looks like all game plans from the OCs of just of, of overtime type plays. We never saw that from Tevin Jones all game long. A couple from Sean Bain, but sort of fake like he was going to line up as a tight end and then just shot outside. What a game. What a finish. Overtime. Second mini game. Second possession Saskatchewan. At the Calgary 14 in the first down. Morrow, what a game he's had. Keeps driving. Taken down after a few yards. It'll be a second and long coming up. Yeah, you got to keep with what's been working, even though you're here, because the, the manageable second down is still very important, because Trevor Harris can get a first down without scoring at this point. So Kelly Jeffrey sticks right with the game plan, gets a couple on first down. Two Morrow, second and eight. Crowd picking up. Three receivers to the right. Looking to the left to the end zone. No. Bain wants a flag. Moxie in the coverage. No flag. Third down. And a field goal situation for the Riders. Yeah, you know, I mentioned the fans and the switching of ends in overtime, and this was Bain on an, on an out route on Moxie, who, who closes very well and gets his hand there to knock it away, and Bain had to look right back into the sun going this direction.
And and we saw Dave Dickinson. Saskatchewan is challenging that yeah. there's defensive pass interference. We'll review the play. Yeah, I thought that might happen. You, you saw Dave throw his in a very questionable play just just because you might as well you don't want to leave the game with the challenge in your pocket so let's take a look again here there's the out route and does moxie grab or pull him or impede him to the football that's what we got to look for here on this play so he's got his hand on his waist you can guide him or you can touch the receiver but you can't twist him or pull him back or impede him to his route or to the ball that's one look though Big challenge. If he wins it, it would go down to the one. If not, they would very likely be trying to kick a field goal and lead by three coming down to the final possession for Calgary. I mean, that was, that was a real close look in isolation, so... We'll see if this maybe shows anything from behind down at the bottom of your screen. Now, I don't really see a grab jersey or anything like that. Again, you know, I, I think the coaches. I think the coaches challenging these are just saying, hey, we might as well try it. But I don't see any P.I. there. They still, still discuss it, and we're awaiting word. After review, the ruling on the field stands. So for each of the Dickinson brothers, they tried it, but they don't get it. Yeah, so Craig could have got the good try. <laughs> you think Craig's try might have been a little bit no, more? I, I think like, they were both about the same. Yeah, okay. <laughs> we'll call that a tie. Games a tie so far. Riders looking to move in front again, and they do. Another field goal by Lother. And so Saskatchewan, having the first possession of the second mini game, ends up with a field goal. And now it'll come down to the Stampeders from the 35 and see if they can get to the end zone to win it. Settle for a field goal to tie it. Or can the Riders hang on? Jake Mayer is out again. Last pass, a little short. He took a hit late in regulation. Saw more of Tommy Stevens, who ran the first two plays of the first mini game. And keep in mind, you're in field goal range without running a play for Rene Paredes. And now it's up to Calgary to try and score that major and win this game. Now, what's the health of of Jake Mayer. Mills, he busted loose. Hedrick Mills with a good run for the Stamps, getting it close to the Ryder 20. First down, Calgary. He looks fresh. I mean, we're in the second overtime, and, and those legs don't look like they are at all running in quicksand like you feel this deep in a game. Pretty much every player, not not Diedrich Mills. 14-yard gain, and he was picking them up and putting them down. Uh, some words for Deontay Williams after two, but these are two teams, one and one in the West, with Winnipeg at two and one and BC at three and zero. Oh. From the 21, Mills again, and he keeps those legs chugging. One of the things that the Riders are doing defensively on those last two runs were trying to pull and rip the ball out, trying to create a fumble, because that would end it. And Jason Shivers could, you know, obviously he'd love to see that. However, when you don't form tackle and you try to just rip the ball without securing a tackle, that's how good running backs can, can break a big play. So what do you do if you get six yards? I'll ask you in a minute if it happens. <laughs> decision time right now looking for another first down of the end zone to win it second and seven from the rider 18 Mayer they got some heat on but he escapes he looks into the end zone intercepted the game is over Saskatchewan wins it after all denied 
like their chance to even tie it. Nick Marshall, who missed a couple of chances in this game for an interception, picks that one off. And the Riders, who saw their 10-point lead evaporate in the fourth, get on stage to celebrate a victory that's been a long time coming here in Calgary. And the guy who gave up the big play to Malik Henry earlier in this game by trying to cut underneath for an interception, Nick Marshall, ends it in overtime. Jake Mayer feels it. Obviously, he's taking full responsibility. You could tell by his reaction. He does a nice job of breaking the pocket here. Just not sure what he saw because there were a couple of defenders. Micah Tights was there. Nick Marshall, of course. Here's a better look at what he saw. I guess he just tried to lift it up over Nick Marshall and just couldn't get enough on it. And again, how did that injury affect him late in the game? You do have to wonder, but Marshall makes the most of that chance. You're right. And, you know, for Calgary, they made it so interesting down 10 late, and their defense stood up well. And Mayer could just wonder what might have been. Paredes had the big kick. And so they came back and forced this OT. But ultimately, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, who haven't had many wins against the Stampeders in recent years, get a big one here in week three as they improve to two and one and the stamps fall to one and two. Big win, they play again in a few weeks. They do, Trevor Harris gets his second ever victory against the Calgary Stampeders and Big Brother has Little Brother's number this time, but in the closest of ways. And overtime. Nick Marshall seals the deal for Saskatchewan. Thank you for watching the CFL on TSN.